Cheers. Cheers. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 10 of the Cheers 2 Comics podcast, where each week two of your friends will talk about their favorite comic books of the week, including characters, creators, news, and anything else underneath our illustrated sun. If you like that, grab a beverage and join me, one of your hosts, Justin Jones, and the Krampus of Camp Comic Books, Brian Wayne. Yo. What's up, man? Uh, not much, man. What's happening? Not a whole lot. It's uh, almost Christmas. It is. It is almost Christmas. We were recording the day before Christmas Eve. Indeed. So, yeah. Yeah, man. Um, so, what do you usually do around Christmas? Like, um, as far as traditions go. Like, everybody, I think everybody, no matter if you celebrate Christmas or not, there's usually traditions this, this time of year. There is. When my family is in the state, um, spend it with them. We usually have a few family friends over, have a big meal, maybe play a board game or card games, and drink a lot. Yeah. But uh, the day before Christmas is my uh, dad's birthday. Oh, fun. So we always like to go out to something new that we, none of us have ever been to. He's kind of a man of old habits, so we like to force him to do something new on his birthday, and usually he adds that to his repertoire of usual places to get the usual thing. Son of a bitch. Yeah. Right on, man. How about you? Uh, me, I'm... Um like, as far as Christmas Day goes, usually, like, all the family gathering and stuff usually takes place a, a week or two before or after. It never really works out to where we're all together on Christmas, per se. So I usually take that day to myself, and that's when I get to binge watch all my Christmas movies. Uh, yeah, like, all the childhood goodness. All the good classics. Yeah, man. Um, uh, what a wonderful life. It's a wonderful die life. Die hard. No, nope, those are the those those two are the big ones for sure. Um, the It's a Wonderful Life though. I I watch by myself because my. You don't want to see him, but you see you cry, right? Exactly. Of course, of course. <laughs> it's so fucking good. You get it. It's actually one of my all-time favorites. So, but I only <laughs> watch it on Christmas because. Not really a Christmas story. I mean, part of it takes place on Christmas, but it really has nothing to do with Christmas. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's that's been my Christmas tradition. Yeah, fair yeah. enough, fair enough. For many a year now. So yeah, man, um, nothing really uh, comic book related in the news. It was uh, a slow week. All the writers and everything, all the... Yeah, uh, nothing that we're not going to already talk about in the yeah. issues. Yeah, they're all preparing for... The holidays themselves, so... As they should be. Yeah. Yeah. Creators are people, too. <laughs> so, um... I guess we could just get on with, uh... This week's overview. That's a sound idea. What do you want to start off with? Uh, another image, Skybound number one. Uh, Hardcore number one. By Andy Diggle, Alessandro Vitti, and Adriano Lucas. Yeah, uh, I haven't, covered haven't by this one. You know, this one escaped me, too. I, I didn't... I didn't see it coming, saw it on the shelf, and I was like, oh shit, gotta love me an image number one. Hell yeah. And the, the, the cover by Dan Panosian? Panosian. was, like, the, the orange and reds really make it stand out on the shelf, so. Yeah, it's a cool comic, uh, cool cover. Uh, so Tell me about it. It's it's a cool concept, too. It's pretty much, um, uh, the concept is meat puppets. You're... There's this technology out there. It's a military technology they use to, um, uh, like what they do is they have this. It's it's kind of a cool system. They they have like a sniper team that goes out and they find out who they want to use as the target, and the target is, becomes manipulated by a soldier. Um, and kind of like uh, the fucking, oh, what was the movie? They do? I don't know. Like, any movie where someone's, like, manning a robot from a distance. Like, all of that type of Kinda shit. Kind of like Avatar. Kind of, yeah. Just with, like, people. But the the catch is, is like, once the implant's in you, the, uh, the, the target is destroyed within 72 hours. Once... So, but, and then if you're still linked up with that, that target within 72 hours, then the... The, the engineer, pilot, pilot, that's the word, mm -hmm. is, um, he, he's exposed to irreparable brain damage himself. So it's like a fight against the clock situation whenever you do this. 
but it's a really cool concept, and they already brought in a whole lot of, uh, uh very intriguing plot points that can, I mean, I'm fully on board with this story, so hardcore number one. Cool. Yeah, for right sure. Right on. And the art's amazing, too, like, it's... It's everything about this book is awesome. Like we've already established a bad guy, and it's it's fucking cool. Cool. Well, I'll have to check it out for sure. What you got? Um, I read Mega Ghost this week by Gabe Soria and Gideon Kendall. Did you read this one? No, no, I missed it. This one's kind of fun. It's uh, sets in like this haunted little town, and uh, it's got a lot of occult. You know, mystery, voodoo, magic uh, vibe to it, but set into like the everyday vibe. Uh, we start off with uh, some of these punk rockers getting this like almost comic book looking, but like thicker magical tomb, like the Necromedia or something like that. And then this one kid is like, exploring this haunted mansion and he ends up putting a ring on, you know, but he gets stuck on, but he sees these three ghosts that start talking to him, like, oh, well, you are here to summon us into the, as the signs show, to pre- prevent horror, blah, 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 well, he freaks out and runs away, runs into these punks, and like, oh, maybe this is the sign they're talking about, and does a bunch of research, but they had mentioned that uh, on Saturday, there's going to be some event, and he's like, oh, okay, I think I know what's going to happen, what day is it? Saturday, oh, no, and he runs to the ghost, like, I don't really know the ritual to, to summon you guys, don't worry, we'll share that with you, and then all these ghosts become one giant mecha ghost, or mega ghost, and they fight the big bad evil guy that is summoned by these punk rockers, and... It sounds like a goofy, fun story. Yeah, and then these punk rockers turn their tail and run to their mysterious shadow-laden master, and... Yeah, he uh, ends up revealing himself to them, and... It, it, it sounds like it's gonna have like a really wacky, zany story to it and that the the art style really sells it to me because yeah, it's kind of this like weird Saturday morning ish type story oh yeah kind of I, I like it you know you got the mega ghost as your big good guy and then you have your ultra ghoul which is your big bad evil guy so are you gonna read issue two I am gonna read issue two this was if you're looking for that super serious long lasting run I'm not sure if this is going to be it, but if you're looking for a fun read, I think this is definitely worth your time. Fucking A. Sorry, I was pouring a beer. Oh, we forgot to talk about what we're drinking. What are we drinking? Um, decided to go with the strawberry lager for some reason by Abita Brewing. Brewing. Abita Brewing. There we go. This is your favorite beer, right? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my least favorite either, though. It was strange. I ex- no. I expected less strawberry out of a strawberry beer because naturally. No, um, <laughs> it's it looks like a beer, it smells like a beer, but it's it doesn't really taste like a beer. Yeah, it, it's it's very not beery. It, it tastes like if you squeezed an unripe strawberry into a glass and gave it the illusion of a beer, and you put it with like a really weak domestic beer. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what it tastes like. Yeah. Um, so it's not bad. It's just not what I expected. No, it's it's not my least favorite. No, that's not a lie not. It, it's it's better now that I've drank one and a half than it was when I first took that, that initial sip, for sure. Yeah, well, only because I think that first initial sip, you're like, what the fuck is... is I said beer. Yeah. Do we want to turn this into a beer podcast, or should we go back to comic books? Well, yeah, no. I definitely want to talk about beer? comic books. Yeah, okay. We're now a beer podcast, everybody. We're Cheers not. to beer. No, no. God, no. no. God, no. Back to comics? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bloodshot Rising Spirit number two. Uh, Kevin Gravois, Ken Lashley, Ryan Wynn, Oliver Borges, and Diego Rodriguez. And I decided to go with the variant cover by Leaf Jones. Mm-hmm. So, I'm just picking up where the second one left off, really. We're just, we're getting a... Bloodshot origin story, uh, and uh, this takes place. You know, this is the story that takes place before all the previous stories. Right. As an origin story would naturally, um, but um, what this the the main plot point of the story here is the facility, the Rising Spirit program or 
they're trying to take care of Bloodshot's memory. They want to make sure that he is the perfect super soldier to where he has no recollection of any of that shit. So right, they don't want any wild cards with this power. Right, right. So they, they're they testing this nanite technology, and towards the end, it seems like it uh, it's doing its job. Kind of. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, so the, the whole thing is, like, tricking you or trying to think, okay, well, here's the real story, but actually this was also... Them implanting memories into him, blah, 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 more trickery. But finally something took. But with that last panel, which alludes to the yeah. last comic book of I'm a made man, which before he was a made man, before he got thrown in jail, which is just a hitman. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ready made. Yeah, that's that's his final. Uh, yeah, no, it's... I'm loving this book. Like I've always, Bloodshot's always been a character that I've had interest in. I like his, I like his his version of a healing factor. I think it's cool. It's so nanites and um, he regenerates via protein. Um, but I think part of the story is trying to take away the the factor of needing protein to regenerate as quick too. I think they kind of touch on that in this book a little bit. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. There's there's lots of I wouldn't say lots of cool stuff. It's it's a very linear plot, seemingly. A lot of little nods to the character. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's great though. I I'm I'm fully on board. I don't know if this is the new ongoing now or how it is, but I don't think there's any other Bloodshot titles out there that I know of. So I, I know next to nothing about this character. Yeah. I'm I am interested in this and. Yeah, I guess they read by really quickly, which is a good sign, so I'll, yeah. I'll keep reading until it loses my interest or until I'm fully on board. Yeah, I'm, I've, like I said, most of the Valiant characters, I feel silly for not jumping on, like Exo, Man of War, and uh, Ninja K, and all that stuff, but uh, I'm, I am glad that Bloodshot, Rising Spirit, it's... It's an early jumping on point, you know, two issues at this point. So if you're in the same boat I was, and you're like, ah, oh, fuck, I keep missing out on all these Valiant titles, and the Valiant universe, I have a feeling in the next couple of years is going to be more relevant than ever, because I think they're getting movie deals and shit now. Oh, good so, for them. Yeah. Something like that, I don't know, don't quote me, but, yeah, yeah. Um, we have another number two this week. We do, we do. Middle West number two. Uh, Scotty Young. Jorge Corona, Jean-Francois Buelo, and Mike Huddleston did the cover again. Love these covers so far for these first two issues. Definitely. It definitely captures an, an essence of what you're going to find inside a comic. So the issue one is already... It just went into its third print already <clears throat> this week. Oh, cool. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. Congratulations, guys. Yeah. Um, so, and issue number two... I have a feeling is also going to be printed several times because I think it's better. It just the the story's progressing as I hope it would. Um, there's still lots of questions, obviously. Like what Definitely. are these pink vials? Like I, I, I'm assuming yeah, yeah. it's like the power source. I think so. I think so. But I want I want to see how that's explained. Like I, I want I just want I, I want more. Damn it. Mm-hmm. What more? So it leaves off with uh, what's our boy Abel mm-hmm. and the fox. He's on the train escaping his daddy, his tornado daddy, and so yeah, they're they're on their way, and then they find themselves being cornered by this by some hungry, hungry hobos. <laughs> hungry, hungry hobo. Yes, uh, it's a cool character design too. It's got like the old bird skull and all that shit. Yep. And then who saves the day but this old wizard man named Jeb? Mm-hmm. And he comes in and he be gone with your bad self and eventually talks these two strange children and over to his yeah, he's got some fun sweet house. staff skills, man. He he practically straight up murdered that one. A bow staff. He's, he's he's an expert with the bow staff. He's kind of a big deal. Kind of a big deal. Yeah. So yeah, no, he he uh he convinces these two or not two this young child and his uh nameless fox. Who prefers to be nameless. Right. I like how they just explain it. Yeah, like, he's no just names. Fox. Yeah, just yeah. a fucking Fox. So yeah, and this this old man wizard, he's got like this, uh, he converted this old fun house. Yeah, that almost looks like a, like a, uh, what was the name of uh, Neverland in, in Hook? Kind of like a mix between that, but a carnival and yeah. a uh, yeah, kind nice. of a mobile home park. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a very creative design for it sure. Is. You could tell this old wizard put a lot of time into it. So, I mean, it's like this giant tree fort, essentially, but with a fun house and all that other... Yeah, it's... Yeah. It's, you know, it's made for definitely luring little kids, that's for sure. Whoa, now. <laughs> but, um... The the actual purpose of this kid going to this place was because of the the what he, they keep describing as a wound on his chest. Right. But it starts glowing at times, and they realize the catalyst of glowing is when he gets angry. He loses his temper. And you know when he, they realize that when they bring up his dad mm -hmm. and all that other stuff. So. Yeah, no, that's that's cool. They do that, but then the kid's like, you know, I'm I'm not about it. Fuck off. Right, tell me what's wrong with me. Tell me how I can get better. Right. You know, your medicine didn't work. Of right. course, you know, the kid's scared and on his own, so I mean, he lashes out, right. as I'm sure anybody in his position would do. Right. So well, me and the fox go on their own little mission, pretty much, to figure right. out, to get their own answers, and then as, as it turns out, like... Snooping on the uh, wizard and his raven. Yeah. And he realizes that the wizard seems to have an answer... But he hasn't really expressed it to the to the kids yet. Doesn't really. He knows what's going on, but hasn't explained it to him yet. Yeah, this uh, Magdalena chick apparently ha could possibly help. Right. So yeah, when he realized, you know, the kid realized like, oh yeah, I know that might be. That's who I'm gonna go find. And yep. the uh, fox has a good indication that he might know where they are this time of year, so yeah. that's where they head off. Yeah. And it's it's just uh, I, I mean that's issue two in a nutshell, pretty much, but. Yeah, I love the way Scotty Young is telling the story. The art's fucking incredible. I'm, I'm all aboard. Yeah, I mean, it has been a pleasurable two issues so far, and I'm almost certain that it will continue to be so. Yeah, definitely. You got anything else from Image for us this week? Uh, no, no other indies at all that I could think of. Um, not that, not that really needs talking about at this point. Uh, I guess we can move on to DCU. Do you? Mm. Nope, nothing else I need to talk about this cool. week. Alright, well, let's move on to DC then. Uh, kind of a... So I decided to read Teen Titans for the first time ever oh, this week. Oh, cool. How'd you like it? Uh, well, well, we'll talk about that. Um, uh, Teen Titans 25. Who's the team? Adam Glass, Robson Rocha. Daniel Henriquez and Sonny Cho, and I got the Robson Rocha, Daniel Henriquez, Sonny Cho cover as well. So what we get here actually is a Crush origin story. Crush was revealed in issue 22 or 23. It is Lobo's daughter. So uh, she joined the Teen Titans as a young badass does these days. And sure. Yeah. So I've never read Teen Titans before, and I, I enjoyed this. With this just being a story focusing just on Crush and Jin, mostly Crush, um, it's I don't really get the whole, the team dynamic by any means. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a couple of cameos by Robin in it or whatever. But for the most part, you know, it's, it's talking about uh, why Crush is. So Crush and Jin decide to sneak out and just kind of take a day to themselves. Uh, I, I I feel like with what I get out of the end here, I feel like it's a date type okay. of thing. But I, I can't say for sure. So, uh, meanwhile, you know, we get the whole, like, what makes you tick thing, and then we get into Crush telling her story. So, uh, uh, Crush is adopted by these two former druggies. Mm -hmm. She was found at Burning Man. No. Oh. Um, yeah, like... Good place like, to be found. Yeah, crash landing uh, around the Burning Man site. These two fucking drugged out hippies were like, whoa, that's gotta see what it is. That's a sweet costume, man. Yeah, and then they go to the site and they're like, whoa, let's keep this baby and change our lives forever. And that's... And that's how children are born. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, it's a stork. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What school did you go to? Well, I thought the stork crash land the babies into Burning Man. That's... Oh, fuck. Isn't that, isn't that you're how... Mix, you're mixing Norse mythology and Greek mythology. Ah, fuck, I do that again. My, my yeah. bad. Yeah. So, yeah, when they find this baby is, like, wrapped up in chain... This chain that's essentially project, protecting Crush. And the chain's name is uh, Obelus. So... Obviously a dude chain. Uh, yeah. Um, 
terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you get crushed slightly growing up, and then one day she sees on the news that Lobo is fighting Superman. And she's like, wait, I look like that guy. That looks like me. But he's a bad guy. And she's like, but I'm a fucking bad girl! I'm a bad girl! And she goes on her teenage angst things, and goes off on her way, and in the meantime, the druggy parents are like, hey, let's do something fucking stupid and druggy. So they, <laughs> you know, they, they're still shit parents, but they're raising this kid. Um, they're doing their best. They're, they're not being shit parents in front of her, but every chance they get when she's not around. And that's exposed later on when the, uh, the guy that um, ends up fucking him up, Ezekiel, like, she goes off and she finds her adopted parents dead. Oh, snap. Yeah, she comes home after a little tantrum with the Lobo thing, and then she's like, um... And her chain's gone, too. So she goes this whole time, and then... It, uh, she's telling the story, like, oh, and that's where it is now. So it kind of... Like, one thing I don't understand is, like, this all happened when she was like, several years younger than she is now. Mm -hmm. So... She just carried on her life for several years, and then she's on this date with Jen, and she's like, hey, let's go get your chain back and find out who killed your parents. So, let's... Well, I mean, when you're suddenly orphaned and on your own and just came to the realization that you're a supervillain's daughter, I'm sure there's a, lo a long growth process for growth. there. She just became a teen titan... A couple months. So, I, I don't know. Like I said, this is my first time reading Teen Titans. So I, I I'm, really not, I'm not judging. I just... To me, that was kind of taken back. I'm like, why does it take so long for you to uh, want to avenge them? And, like, because go they get, just go get wrote the plot hook, Brian, okay? I, well, <laughs> that, that reasoning doesn't resonate with me. I don't... I won't ever buy that. Huh? Just because that's how it's written. I won't ever buy that. Um, I... I'm going to have to go back and read more Teen Titans. Or maybe it's just something that's still floating on. I don't know. Yeah, I've been yeah, reading Titans, I'm, but not Teen Titans, I don't so know I can't I, help you there. Yeah, I don't know if I missed something while I was reading this. I just found that very weird that just like all of a sudden, let's go fucking take care of this. And they do. They go and they meet up with fucking Ezekiel, and he rubs it in their face, and the chain attacks them. And she's like, oh no, but I thought we were cool, chain. And... Uh, so this chain is sentient? Yes. Okay. Yes. Huh. And eventually the chain changes its mind again, and... The chain's name is Obelisk, I, I gotta say that. I keep... I, I should say Obelisk, not the chain. Ob. Yeah. Something like that. But, <laughs> yeah. And then, fucking, they prevail. But it turns out, like, the whole reasoning for Ezekiel killing their parents is because... Like I stated earlier, after she went off and did her tantrum thing, mm -hmm. like they're like, oh, let's be shitty people. And that's exactly what they did. Like They like fucked over this Ezekiel guy, and he don't play, apparently. Kills no. motherfuckers. I guess when you uh, step with the wrong people. Yeah, but he stepped with uh, Lobo's daughter's adopted parents. So I think he fucked up. Sounds like it. Yeah, <laughs> I I actually I I really enjoyed the story. Are you There's gonna keep reading part. Teen Titans? I think I am. I think oh. I am at least for a couple more issues. See what it's going on. Like this was an exercise anniversary issue. Like I said, it was just an origin story. I want to see how they play like the dynamic of Robin and I don't even know who's a member of the Teen Titans. I I really don't. I don't yeah, follow. I don't, I don't follow any of the teams. You're you're so you're reading Titans. Like, I mean who, Titans, not Teen who, Titans. Who's on Titans then? Oh man, we have a uh, God Snow Guard. Okay. We have uh, Miles Morales, uh, Spider Man. We no. have that's champions. Ah, uh, it's champions. Hmm. God, I can't. Remember. Oh, so we have who is that? A uh, uh, B list Wonder Woman chick. Yeah. So you lost me. Yeah, I don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't know who's on any of it. So Starfire, Cyborg, like, are any of these names ringing a bell? No, like, is this team no. Titan? All right, I'm just going to have to fucking read it then. I don't know. Like, if you can't even name one person on the Titans, it tells me it's not a very good team. You know, I've only read two issues so far, and I just... Like, is there a we... Robin of some sort? No. There's not even a fucking Robin in the Okay, book? well, no. But they are... They were put back together, because, okay. 
All right, I'm looking this Hold up. on. This has me the going. Titans, the old Titans were broken up by the Justice League, and now there is a new Titans team that was put together by Nightwing. Okay. And they were just on a... Okay, so there's Raven. Okay. Fuck. There is not Beast Boy, but the other green morphine dude. Got me. I have fucking no idea. Yeah, see, I'm... I'm it's been a couple of weeks. I'm really fuzzy on the details. Yeah. I don't know. I pull up Titans' current team, and it's giving me fucking NFL rosters. I don't know. Also Over good. it. I, okay. Well, Next I, DC I at least book, know that Ryan. there's a fucking Robin in Teen Titans, and there's Crush, and there's Jin. I know that much. That's what I got out of this book. So I can tell you three people in this book. There's no sign of a cyborg or anything like that. I don't fucking know. This is why I don't read these. I haven't read these things, because it's... I didn't know there's a difference between Titans and Teen Titans until not too long ago. Like, it's... There's... There's... Young adults, children, and adult teams now. So, I don't know. I don't know. I'm lost. I'm all flustered. Look at me. Tell me about a comic book you're not lost on. Fucking... Well, I was lost. I was I was very lost on this book. This podcast is going so well. It is. It's great. <laughs> I was very lost on this book until issue five. Batman Kings of Fear. Scott Peterson, Kelly Jones, Michelle Madsen. Kelly Jones and Michelle Madsen also did the cover. So, this whole arc... This is a six-issue miniseries, and it's a whole arc of Scarecrow just fucking with Batman. Cool. Um, it's very, it kind of reminds me a lot of, like, uh, like the Scrooge story. It's like, oh, this is how things, blah, blah, blah. So this story is very much that. It's not like a ghost of Christmas past, future, or anything like that. But, um, he shows Batman a Gotham without Batman. And this drives Batman nuts. Because a Batman, or a Gotham without Batman is a pretty fucking clean-ass um, Gotham. So, like, the Riddler, if there's no Batman in Gotham, the Riddler, he's a game designer. Oh, sweet. Um, Mr. Freeze, he invents a, uh, a space cryo program to be able to get astronauts into space longer for longer journeys. Ooh, cool. Um, Poison Ivy, she has a program to restore rainforests, naturally. Bane just never comes to Gotham. Wow. If Batman doesn't isn't in Gotham, yeah, then Bane just never no shows for up. Him to hunt he he him. never even escapes prison. Oh wow! Yes, um, and then it gets to the point where jo or Batman's like, well, okay, well, what about the big one? What about the Joker? And he's Certainly. like, he's like, well, check this out. The Joker actually goes on to work for the government in criminal. Like he's able to. He's, he goes off and he, like, solves hundreds of cold case files because he's, like, able to get into a criminal... He's a criminal file. profiler. A, a criminal profile, that's exactly what Wow, I can yes. totally see that, and, for sure. And then, I, this is the part I love the most, where Batman's like, and the penguin? And he's like, well, the penguin's a mobster. Not everything's about you, Batman. And I'm like, ah! Oh, oh right on. <laughs> <laughs> on. Yeah, on brand, for sure. <laughs> and uh, essentially, that that's what you're getting out of this. So I'm curious to see... And then... You know, Batman, um, he's starting to, to come to... Because he's under the fear gas this whole time. Right. Um, and then he's starting to come to, and he pulls out these two syringes, and you're under the impression that he's about to stick Scarecrow with his own medicine, and Scarecrow naturally is like, yeah, try it, I dare you. And then right. Batman sticks himself, and... Oh, he he's goes going into, for a second dose. Uh, he's like, Ooh. goes into like a rage, and then that's... Uh, so, in the sixth issue, oh. we're going to see Batman raged out. Kelly Jones kills it with this art. Like, it's a very old-school style Batman. Like, you see with the long, pointy ears. Oh, I like that. Yeah, uh, Michelle Madsen does an amazing job with the colors. It's I, I love the interiors in this book. Uh, it's I can see why. I love the use of shading and colors. Yeah, have you oh, it's very inspiring. Oh, yeah. Black. And then you see, like, that... What did you do to me? Like, he's... Uh, this no, I, I like it. Yeah, the, I dig it. This the, is gonna be one I'm gonna have to jump in on. And like I said, we'll, we'll see issue six next month, um, and then I'll wrap it up. But this is uh, like I said, the first 
the first uh, four issues was very back and forth. Like, I couldn't decide whether I wanted to drop it or not. And I was like, ah, it's only six, I might as well complete it. Almost there. And then after the fifth issue, I'm like, oh, I'm so glad I kept reading this. Because this was... No, it sounds cool. great. You, I, I like the concept of a Gotham, or a, yeah, a Gotham without Batman. And then they explain what a Gotham without Batman would be. A Riddler's a game But they're him. really just, like, showing Batman his greatest fear of what Gotham could be That's without him. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. No, uh, but it all sounds on brand. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Speaking of weird Batman stories, this one <laughs> could, could be confusing to some. It it was a little bit, yes. definitely. I will explain some stuff to you. Please do. Um, so, Batman 61, Tom King, uh, Travis Moore, and Tamara Bonvillain. Uh, I got uh, Tony S. Daniel and some of Mo Ray cover here. That's cover A. So this is 61 of Batman, Nightmares Part 1. Nightmare with a K. So, this is bringing back a story that took place in Batman 38. Um, and if you didn't read Batman 38, then Batman 61 was confusing as fuck. A little bit. So, uh, they introduced a character in 38 who goes by Master Wayne. He is a child who um, is obsessed with the story of Bruce Wayne losing his parents. So he goes off and he... I mean, he, he he's being consoled by Bruce Wayne. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, if it, let me explain... His origin in 38 before we jump into 61. If, just just for the reader's sake. So in 38, he's um, he's being consoled by Bruce Wayne. And uh, you're you're starting to think that, oh shit, we got a new Robin on our hands. Oh. Like this, this kid, like he, he, he lost his parents in a brutal manner. He came home and all stabbed to death and blah, blah, blah. And then as Batman's going through the clues in his detective manner like he does... Like, there's, you know, they they lead into, um, science pointed to one criminal that was locked up at one point, and then it was, like, possibly Two-Face, and then the Batman's doing it, math, and then it turns out the kid did it. Oh, and like So, yeah, and he, like, even has, like, Martha and Thomas, like, carved into his face at this point once Batman confronts the kid. Right. And then locks him up. So then, issue 61 is the return of Master Wayne. So... Just to give you an idea here, because there's a lot of, uh, you don't know if this is like a flashback or whatever going on here. Right, yeah, it definitely, and then so. it flipped, and I was like, oh, okay, this is obviously all in this deranged person's head, but oh, I, I didn't understand the backstory, thank you. Yes, yes. So essentially, with 61, it's revisiting that story kind of just in a different perspective, and it shows the same kid, um, like, slicing someone's, th like, he's able to manipulate his way to visit, um, who is presumably his parents' killer. Right. And he cuts his throat. And, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think this is just another prisoner. See, I think this kid's also a prisoner at this time, and he just kills another one with this delusion that he's visiting. And That's that, what it was. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was a yeah. There's some good, good, good art in this one though, for sure. They definitely seal the deal about how crazy this kid is. Oh yeah, no, it's Travis Moore does a great job, and like the scars in his face versus Thomas and Martha, like he's very much a Bruce Wayne fanboy. This is uh, this was uh, this was awesome. Like I said, I, I know I talked more about like a back issue than anything, but give it context. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Because I didn't know who this kid was either, and uh, I had to remember that issue. And yeah, uh, moving along in the Bat family, Nightwing fifty five, uh, Scott Lobdell, Fabian Siza, I think I'm saying that right. Chris Mooneyham, Gary Brown, and Hi Fi cover by Chris Mooneyham and Nick Filardi. So the story is gaining momentum. Um, it starts out with Rick in a bar with that girl that he likes who's right. a bartender and she goes out to take out the trash and there's a scuffle out there and 
Rick. Mad men fighting. Yeah, yeah. Rick comes out and muscle memory kicks in and he whoops that ass again. So you're getting all that. And then on the flip side, this uh, detective, uh, what the fuck? Sapienza. Sap, Sap, Detective Sap. He's been exposed as a new Nightwing. But so not really. Y- yeah. Because it's really just his other Nightwing friends busting his balls in the diner. So oh, yeah, 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 yeah that's right. I forget, yeah, 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 yeah. But he has, but the the Bloodhaven does know, like, it is out there that there is a Nightwing now. Right. So, yeah, that's right. I forgot about the context there. Meanwhile, we get uh, this lady, Detective Svdobda. I, I can't I can't say those names those Russian names. Right, this fake detective. Yeah, As she, yeah, she's going by Detective Svodoba, and she's investigating this Doctor Grude, or as we know him, Doctor Crane, or Scarecrow, or the Scarecrow, if you're yeah. So she kind of calls him out, and he doses like, takes her with some the gas. bait, lures her in, doses her. And he realizes that the the best fear gas is not fear. The lack of fear. The lack of fear. And that's what he just unleashes on this town. And that's that's kind of what you're getting out of this. You're getting the... Driving all these people to hostility. Yeah, exactly. So we get a Bloodhaven being all freaked out. Then you get the new Nightwing team and their um kind of gas masks if you will they're not really a mask yeah, they're they look like they'd be comic book bre- breather yeah yeah they look like the thing that the, the they did in episode one when they like put it in their mouth and right let's breathe, breathe in the water, the water. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's what it looks like <laughs> nice <to me. laughs> yep but um yeah, yeah so no this was a this was cool it's definitely gaining momentum i'm starting to feel that rick is gonna Finally, like, stop being a little bitch. And yeah, well, I mean, maybe we're going to see a new addition. Like, I, I still think that they have a lot that they could do. Maybe they won't make him Nightwing again. Maybe we have a new Nightwing. And, and like, maybe... Instead of, a night, or instead of the Bat family, we have, like, a Nightwing family. Yeah, a little extended family. Uh, I don't know. I don't maybe know. Maybe we have some new legacy characters. I, I think if... Honestly, what I would like to happen is Batman to find out all these detectives are fucking up Bloodhaven and Nightwing shit. And I want to see Batman, like, crack all of their skulls and be like, Rick, you're a fucking cuckold. Put this shit back on and do your thing. And and then his bartender girlfriend also becomes Nightwing. And she's going to be like, oh my god. She's going to, like, notice in the distance. She'll be like, you was the Nightwing for reals the whole time? And then he's going to be like, oh shit, but you know now you weren't supposed to see any of that. No, 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 this is DC. They're going to keep her in the dark forever, and they're going to destroy this relationship like they always do. No, no, but it's Rick, though. Like, Rick always has to have the most complicated fucking uh, woman relationships ever. So, yeah, no, that's... I, so, don't even buy the next five issues. I just told them to you guys. Just kidding. But how cool would that be, though, if Batman <laughs> did show up? And like, Oh, I definitely think we're going to find some more Batman in these, for sure. Yeah, I, I would like to see that, because he's starting to... Like, check off all the names that he's been pissed off at on account of, like, Rick being shot in the head. And, like, he took care of, um, uh, what, what's his face, uh, the, the Russian guy, um, KG Beast. Mm-hmm. He left him with a broken neck. And then he went after the Penguin. Right. Who feels like he knows who set up the blah, blah, blah. And then that led to Bane. That was actually, like, at this point, we don't know what's going on with Bane, because we, like, change story arcs now. Like, issue 60 was like, oh, shit, okay. Oh, I'm sure there'll be more to come when we least expect it. Yeah, like, that was a great cliffhanger, though, like, what happened with Penguin and all that. Like, is Penguin cool? Like, is he cool? Because it looked like he got fucked up Mm -hmm. Um, by this, uh, yeah. So far, everything I've read from Batman, though, Tom King has been twisting these into fun oh, yeah, he's stories. He's tying them in well. Yeah, like, definitely. It makes, you, it makes you want to read all of them because you don't want to miss anything. Like, it's just, for instance, if you miss 38, you're like, well, now I feel silly. Like, I don't... I don't understand a Batman book. Like, this doesn't... Oh, I don't... I, this can't be. So now you got to go back and read. Right, well, I'm sure there's lots of little more 
Easter eggs that I'm missing if I ha had oh, read those. Totally, totally. Like, I'm fuzzy up until 50. Like, I was kind of like, in and out. Shit. Well, we're talking a lot about Batman right after Nightwing. Let's go ahead and move forward with our DC. Uh, no more DC. Do you have any DC books? I don't have any more DC uh, books that I read. Again, I read Champions, but That's I, again, I don't really have a whole lot to, to talk about, so... That was Marvel. Champions is Marvel. It is Marvel. I don't know why I keep mixing those two up. Yeah, I don't know. There's too many fucking child teams out there. I don't know. There's young adults, children... Children. Children. <laughs> That's a new word. But yeah, I don't know. Just so many... Uh, I don't know. Talking could, about Marvel, what do you want to start with this week? Uh, fucking Old Man Hawkeye number 12. Of 12. So this book started at the beginning of the year. And here we are at the end... And I did not disappoint. Um, Marco Cicchetto did the cover, but he did not do the interiors, just like the last issue. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Ethan Sachs is writing, uh, as as well he should, because he's oh he's doing such an amazing job with these old man uh, wasteland stories. And then who else? Francesco Mobili. He was our interior guy this week. Uh, he he broke out last week or last issue that was his first Marvel work and blew my fucking mind like and got interiors the week la that week um, so yeah he's he's doing this give him more work Marvel and then Andres Mosa colored this and did a goddamn great job so it starts out where it left off as well it should there's no there's not much story to be told so no more bouncing around or anything like that. Uh, Avalanche has blinded Hawkeye by shaking his head really fast to detach the retinas, exactly. and now he's completely blind. Uh, but Kate's Kate's in the mix, and she becomes his eyes. Mm -hmm. So she's like, 11 o'clock, 40 to 5 degrees up, and blah, blah, blah. So but he's blindly... Three feet to the left. Yeah, blindly tagging all these motherfuckers. You read this too, I think. I did. Awesome. Awesome. So yeah, he, um, he makes his way through. Well, Kate's dealing to, uh, with the stuff inside the uh, the Weapon X facility, and as he leaves the facility, who's standing there, expectedly Bullseye, and then uh, oh no, I take that back. Kate leaves and gets caught up with Bullseye um, after Hawkeye leaves. Um, Clint, I mean, they're both Hawkeye. And then, at this point, Bullseye, he has, like, this card to Kate's throat, and he's trying to lure out Clint. Right. And he does. But I think it's funny, when Clint comes out, he's, like, pointing, like, way far away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's, like, target's aim is 45 degrees. Yeah, this is yeah. a man who's relied on his eyes. <laughs> yeah, because Bullseye has, like, a, a Terminator eye now. So he's able to, like, digitally calculate all that shit. So, yeah, no, it's, uh... Eventually, you know, naturally fucking Hawkeye does his thing and he takes out Bullseye. He still gets him, even though there's the whole hostage situation. And um, then, so, they saved. You know, that's that's it. So then you get Taskmaster reporting to Red Skull. And Taskmaster, I believe that's Taskmaster. It is. Okay, yeah. Um, he, uh... He lies. He's like, oh, yeah, Red Skull, they did. They, they, did. they, they couldn't possibly have survived the avalanche. Yeah, no chance. Yeah. And the explosion of the Weapon X facility on top of all of that. Like, So Red Skull, he's like, oh, cool. That's You're my new favorite. Yeah. But that's not true. And then you get this whole, like, argument between Clint and Kate at the end. And She's had enough of his shit. Yeah. And so she drops his blind ass at uh, Logan's. Yeah, and that's that's where the story ends. So that is the story of Old Man Hawkeye. Um, he will. Ethan Sachs is the same guy writing Old Man Quill that we're gonna get here pretty soon. So we're gonna get another twelve issue maxi series. Uh, I don't recall who's illustrating it though. It's not Marco Cicchetto because he's busy on Daredevil now, which is exciting. But um, uh, I I don't know if. Francesco Mobili I, doesn't do it. I think you're missing a little bit about this comic book, aren't you? What am I missing? Uh, wasn't didn't you read the part where Hawkeye ends up climbing up the cliffs of this monastery and falling down and saying, "Master Stick, I need you to train me," and 
lo and behold, Matt Murdock is there in a monastery to what? to teach him. No. Did you not? Did you not get that? Oh, you're this panel right here. You oh, missed that. son of a bitch! There was another page. Oh my god! Yeah, that's that's, a, that's crazy. the best part, man. Oh, that is all right. Matt Murdock becomes the stick. That's fucking mm -hmm. cool. All right. Well, even better. Kudos to you, Ethan Sachs. Good fucking Expanding job. Expanding the old man universe. They are. Because even in, like, the little blurbs at the end of the book, it, it, it hints, like, there, sh there should definitely be more old man Wolver or old man Logan and old man Clint. I would, I would love to see an old man Murdock. Dude, I totally thought that they were going to kill Hawkeye in this book. I was 1,000... I did not expect Hawkeye, Hawkeye to live past this. I really didn't. I thought... Would have been a fitting end. He, he finds fucking Matt. That's mm -hmm. crazy. Teach me how to fight blind. I, I forget that fucking... Even comic books have fucking credit cutscenes now. Because it's after the credits page. Yeah, I just had to, had to turn that one page. Oh. That's awesome. Fucking A. Sorry. I'm like... Like reaction video type of. Oh no! It's, it's, it's <laughs> awesome to see somebody nerd out about it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So kudos to you guys once again, old man Hawkeye. Like when I remember when the story first came out, it was sent to me in like a random box, and I was like, <laughs> I'm really reaching on this one, because you know Hawkeye. Mm -hmm. And then I opened it up and saw Marco Cicchetto's art, and I was like, this is fucking groundbreaking, and this is cover art all the way through a book. Like this is. Cr crazy good and I'm like now I'm gonna read it because I just like flipped through it at first and right. then I read it and I was like are you fucking kidding me I like Hawkeye this much I didn't know I liked Hawkeye this much and the story just got better as it went on like it, there's no down point there's never a dull issue like it doesn't just like there's not like an issue a filler issue where they just got I can't say enough good things about Old Man Hawkeye. As a matter of fact, I'd say it's probably one of Marvel's top five titles. Well, we'll talk about that next week when we do our year-end special. This book will be talked about. Certainly. Certainly, indeed. So, we had Spider-Geddon number five this week. I believe this is the end of that whole Spider-Geddon event. And yep. it would make sense on account of the movies out now. So, let's marketing sure. ploy over. Good job, Marvel. Dan Slott, Christos Gage, Jorge Molina, uh, Carlo Barberi, Stefano Caselli, Joey Vasquez, and David Curiel. Yes, all of them on this book. That's a massive team. A massive like team of heavy hitters, too. It's not just yeah, a bunch of randos trying to earn their way. And then Jorge Molina did the cover. It's a pretty awesome cover. You got a... Uh, um, well, and you wouldn't know this, but it's Miles Morales there. I do know that. Yeah. If you didn't read the book, you wouldn't be able to tell, though. It's true. It's got this new uh, Cosmo suit. Yes, yes. We got a Cosmic Miles Morales. So, there is a lot of... Um, I guess the easiest way to break this book down, it's the all of the teams that have split up throughout this time are all coming together. Peter Parker of Our Earth 616 shows up with all his boys, and eventually, through it all, they defeat the Inheritors, mm -hmm. um, as we would hope they would. And in what manner do they actually do it? Um, like, they're able to take get them out into another universe and do so safely because uh, as it turns out the spiderling is a pattern maker which apparently is a big deal so she's able to take a thread of the web of life of destiny and um, reroute it to yeah do, do what a pattern maker does um, so there wasn't a pattern maker so the inheritors thought that they had it and then spiderling has been the key to or what is a major key to them being able to progress with their right their plot of saving the universes. Yeah, we get a lot of people showing up in this one. Oh yeah, all of them. Pretty much all of them. We get the first appearance, actual appearance of Spider Cop. So Spider Cop is <laughs> this is technically a key issue because of that. Sure. Um, uh, issue four, we got the cameo of Spider Cop. So you saw him on like a there's a panel where you like saw him on a TV screen. 
Um, Spider Cop, I guess, originated from the video game. It did. So, uh, the video game is getting a six-issue miniseries next year as well. I read that, yeah. Yeah, so, I didn't play the game, so you ain't getting my money there. Sorry, Marvel. So much other Spider-Man to read. Um, so yeah, anyways, back to this book. Um, there's a whole lot of... Uh, so they end up like transfer transferring the consciousness of, of the inheritors via their own cloning apparatus into little babies. Right. And then Spider-Ma'am of... Which Earth is she from? Um, it's essentially... Like, uh, um, May. Aunt May. It is Aunt May. Yeah. I forget what Earth she's from, but... Yeah, she's She from... misses the sweet pitter-patter of young feet. Yeah, so she's in charge of raising baby inheritors now, with no evil memories or anything like that, so... That's a classic Spider-Man way to end a story. In like a Happy comical, ending for everybody, yeah. no violence. Yeah. Yeah, except for not so happy, um, I mean, not necessarily sad ending, but during this whole process, I'm like, we need to see Spider-Norman again. Oh, we do. And we do, in the final panel. Like, he still has his shred of Web of Life Destiny as well. So to me, that tells me that um, he's either going to be, we're going to be seeing him in Superior Spider-Man, and Spider-Ling is going to play a part and Superior Spider-Man arcs uh, coming soon. That's just my own speculation. Definitely possible. But with Superior Spider-Man getting his own title um, this week, or tomorrow, or today, or in two days, whenever you're listening to this podcast, <laughs> it's soon, though. Um, yes, and I have a feeling it's just going to play right into uh, where this story left off. So, was this an important Spider-Man arc? No. No. Um, did this Spider-Man event become highly entertaining and nostalgic for all Spider-Man fans? Certainly. Certainly. Yeah. No, I. not a waste by any means. It's, it's not world-changing, if anything. It's just saying, hey, these characters are about to set some shit up again. Like, Miles Morales is, you know, we, we saw him uh, last week. He got his relaunch of an issue. Um, yeah, so, there's Spider-Gwen, we got a, we got, she got a series out of this, so we got Ghost Spider now, she's got Miles Spider-Man. Morales back, yeah, yeah, we um, have Superior Spider-Man, like you said, yeah, so. there was an introduction to brand new Spider-Man, like, uh, Spider's Man is still out there in every single, in every single university can, we should definitely see some more of him, yes. and I am excited for that, yes, Spider's Man was my favorite thing to come out of this. Event. What was your favorite? Yeah, yeah Spider's Man, Spider's definitely, Man? definitely. Because yeah. right a lot of this com this comic run was was a fun event with a lot of cameos, a lot of fun characters, but a lot of it was just Peter arguing with Peter and Peter arguing with Otto, and then yeah. eventually them teaming up and finding more teams, and then coming to a, a good ending. But and there were so many different like. Um, uh, two or three shot stories like uh, Spider Girls, and there was like two or three of them. That, and apparently, you know, I always, I, I honestly, I brushed a couple of them off. I didn't get every single tie into this whole series like I normally would. But and that actually that bit me in the ass because when I go back to like reading Spider Gwen number five number you know number four like the actual issues of the event oh they definitely throw it in your face you you missed something like and because I didn't read any of the Spider Girls titles like I'm like why the fuck is Spiderling like right well we got three issues I guess two or three issues of explaining why Spiderling is about to be the shit so. That's 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 Marvel kind of being assholeish and saying we need all of your money, but at the same time, <laughs> you know, it's 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 a cool way to tell a story in a way too. It it's, is. I mean, it depends. Is it worth that money for you? You have to make that decision. Well, the way I see it is, did I read those other? The, I mean, the stories that I missed out on. Um, am I completely lost because I don't read them? No, like I, I'm not. smart enough to put two and two together and realize, well, that must something must have happened and blah blah blah. And Marvel does a pretty good job of saying, hey, this is kind of what you missed. Short yeah. and long of it. Oh, Marvel does a great job recapping shit. Mm-hmm. They do a great job recapping shit. 
So I'll, I'll give it to them there. And if anything, that gives them the pass to be able to do all of these extra side issues and event stories. It did get a little long in the tooth for me, though. Yeah, yeah, no, I I, I understand what you're saying there. I do. Um, I, it was just, there were so many different characters and chemistry interactions that I think that they wanted to portray that they had to kind of drag it out a little bit just so sure. we could see all of those interactions. Sure. Um, but at the same time, I think they could have just done a giant sized end issue and just had an epic of all of them on the same, kind of like how they did in the last few pages here, but like, give me 20 pages of that. Now that's asking for a goddamn ass load from an artist for sure to just like here, draw 30 different Spider-Men on all of these pages and then for the, the writer to have to... Um, you know, dialogue, all of that. Now, granted, just because a character's on panel doesn't mean they need to have dialogue. But I mean, you gotta you gotta think. Well, would the Spider-Man say this in front of the Spider-Man? When you're or? as charismatic as Peter, you always have something to say. Yeah. I mean, it's, well, it's, it's yeah. the Spider-Man thing. Yeah, and all of those motherfuckers in the same room for a lot. Like, I, this this is a very complicated story from the get-go. I'm sure. Sure. Dan Slott and Christos Gage were like, "This is." We're in for it here. But there, there was a lot of in-character one-liners, though. They did a great job with these characters. Ultimately, what this book did was um, give us a comic book version of the Spider-Verse movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, okay, let me take that back. I worded that wrong. Give us... That's not, that's not that version at all. Give us the same excitement in a comic book, book version for... A bunch of spider people all together. Sure, I think I get what you mean. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think I think I'm getting my point across. But yeah, so yeah, sorry, we kind of rambled on a lot, but we've been following this event from the beginning since the beginning of the podcast, actually. So, um, yeah. yeah, no, it's it's with Dan Slott being the old Spider-Man writer, um, jumping in on this, I did kind of like. I don't know what Marvel was saying. Not that they did bad, but I'm like, why would you take the old Spider-Man writer and then just give him another event? Like, I, I would have rather have seen Nick Spencer do this event, to be honest. Now, granted, Christos Cage had a huge part of this, too. But this is Dan Slott's event, from my understanding. Like, his whole thing. Maybe they figured so, he would do the character justice. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I just... I would have liked to have seen a fresh take. Christos Cage was a somewhat fresh take, for sure but I would have liked to have not seen Dan Slott's name involved in Spider-Man because he he needs to focus on fucking Iron Man and Fantastic Four, <laughs> goddammit. Like, stop. And you know what? You know, I'm, I'm just going to come out and say it. Maybe that's why Tony Stark Iron Man hasn't been all that great. Um, it, it's It's been good. But, dude, you got big fucking shoes to fill with Brian Michael Bendis being the previous writer. You're going to come off of Spider-Man, Marvel's, like, favorite fucking title, and then just give us mediocre work, because, as it turns out... Wow, throwing shade. No, it's it's not bad, but it's mediocre, because it turns out you've your focus has been on more Spider-Man. Dan Slott, I love you, dude. I love what you did with Spider-Man, but he's, he's not yours anymore. Nick, Nick Spencer's... Focus on Fantastic Four. Like, that's a big fucking deal, dude. Fantastic Four is back. And still reigning Spider-Man? Come on. Like, do the fans justice. The Fantastic Four is not highly reviewed. So, I don't know. Like, I... It's... I... I the story, it, it was good. But the fact... Uh, when it's all balled up, it was still disappointing. Because it take... It's... I think it took away from... Good stories that should be being told consistently. Well, now he should have some more free time to work I on this. I sure fucking hope so. Sure fucking hope so. Like I said, Dan Slott, all the respect in the world. Let it go, dude. Spider-Man's not yours. Uh, moving along. West Coast Avengers, number six. Kelly Thompson, Daniel De Nicuelo, and Trino O'Farrell. Uh, the cover by Stefano Caselli and Nolan Woodward. Um... So, you've been reading West Coast Avengers? I have. You got me onto this one. 
I am still very much enjoying this book. I can't believe through six issues I'm still into this book. I like them. It, it's a lot of the little stuff. I, I really like the depth of characters. They both get visually and that writing. Like That dialogue is on yeah, point. Dude, Kelly Thompson is the shit. I like that she has just been all about MODOK in some way, shape, or form throughout this whole fucking series. MODOK's He's a cool villain. Back. It ain't Brodok anymore. Like, this is Modoc. Um, so we're getting a little bit of, uh, intent, um, what's the fucking motivation here? So, Sin is Red Skull's daughter, and her whole motivation is to just be better than her daddy. So, she wants to take out the fucking West Coast Avengers, and, yeah, she wants to do things that Red Skull could never do. Right. So, no. Yeah. So, daddy issues, naturally. And so she's there with Madame Mask and, like I said, uh, Modoc and uh, Eel. The Eel. So, yeah. They're all sitting there doing their thing laughing because all of the West... Most... The majority of the West Coast Avengers are all mostly powerless. Mm -hmm. uh, all trapped in a classic cage dangling above sharks. Without freaking laser beams, but they're still sharks. They are. Um, so they're uh, you know, being West Coast Avengers in their way. Their their dialogue from across the cage is fun. Like it's, <laughs> yeah, it's a new team, so it's. <laughs> Right, we, we get some good back and forth between the team. We get some good back and forth between uh, um, Hawkeye uh, uh, and her mother. Yes, so Kate, uh, as uh, we're left off in the last issue, where Kate's mom is dead, but she's talking to her. <laughs> well, spoiler, she's still probably dead. Yeah, yeah, no, she's she's still dead, but this is some sort of like funhouse illusion of some sort. So their mom is showing her out, and they get out, and then Kate realizes, like, wait, my friends aren't out yet. And mm -hmm. then the mom's like, so? And she's like, well, no, that's not... Oh, wait a second. You're a fucking bitch. So she goes back to get her friends, and, yeah. Meanwhile, uh, bottoms of cages start dropping out. So then we get... Uh, who's the first to drop? It's, uh... Fuck, who is it? Oh, oh Gwen, cool Gwen and, Gwen and uh, uh, old Quag. Um, what the fuck's his name? Oh, Kid Omega. There we go. Jesus Christ. Um, cause they dating and whatnot. So, <laughs> I, I love it that <laughs> they drop and Kid Omega is helpless and um, the shark's coming at him and then Gwen steps in and just punches the shark right in the fucking face. Right in the nose. That's, and that's, you know, that's how you defeat sharks, duh. Obviously. Yeah. Well, no, that you, know, you punch him in the face. Like, if there are sharks coming at you in the water, like, that is your best defense, actually, is to punch a shark well, in the nose. That's the first thing they teach you in high school, of course. <laughs> God damn it, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to lay down cold hard facts for you in case you're ever stranded, man. Don't punch... Punch it in the face, I'm telling you. Um... They got sensitive noses. So, they play it into that. And then, they, uh... You think I'm fucking with you? <laughs> yeah, well, I could see why you think I would be fucking with you, because I have a history of fucking with you. <laughs> you, you certainly try. You certainly try. <laughs> so, then, eventually, more cages start dropping out. Um, uh, what's his... Fuse's uh, sister, Ramona gets unleashed, and she's not a superhero. She's just on a date with America Chavez. Right. So she's drug into all this. And then that's what triggers Fuse into going, all right, you know what? One or twin powers activate, turn into form of water, right? Yeah, and that's what he does. And they're like, oh, shit, our powers still work? And yeah. Takes he, everything he's got, yeah, yeah, he's able to do yeah. it. And then you get um, Kid Omega. He's like, all right, I got this. And he's able to, like, do this sonic blast on the... Uh, on the the little tank and the sharks go blows flying. all the water out. Yeah. But then he uh he, he it just wipes him out. But right, takes everything he's got. And then we get a land shark. <laughs> right, a fucking cheating. Uh, naturally though, I mean it's oh yeah. So we get this land shark, and who ends up dealing with that fucking? Is it? 
Who is it that takes out the uh, Hawkeye shark? and... Is it uh, Hawkeye? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, America throws a bolt. <laughs> right. Hawkeye's bolts. And Hawkeye is just using his shirt as a slingshot, <laughs> shooting bolt. Yeah, it's, it's so good. It's so good. This is... It's, I love that it doesn't take these characters too serious all the time. It, it's, it's a fun read. It's making me like characters I didn't like before. Um, I'll go ahead and say it. I didn't like America Chavez before. Um, I, yeah, this I know book. next to nothing about almost any she, of them. She's a fairly new character. Um, but I like, I really like the way that Kelly Thompson writes her hair. Um, we're getting a whole different Gwenpool, like a Gwenpool that doesn't even know herself, you know. She's, she knows what she should do or could do. Yeah. So far, all she knows is that she, or the only power that she knows she has is she knows everything about everyone. But that's, yeah. She knows she's a comic book character. Um, this Fuse Cat, I don't know anything about, but I, I like the dynamic there. I like the fact that his sister is dating a fellow member of the team. That he, he's not so cool with it. Fuse is dating Kate Bishop, so that, that's the whole thing. Yeah. Gwenpool is dating Kid Omega. Um, so as it turns out, Hawkeye is just a chauffeur at a fucking traveling crazy prom type of situation. Poor Hawkeye. Sorta, yeah. He's, he's, yeah. It's a really long high school uh, field trip. Is there anyone else in the team that's not dating someone here? Let me look at this lineup again. Who? Derp, 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 derp. Yeah, no, they're all dating someone. Aw. So, uh, well, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I'm not sure how I feel about that. But, oh well. Finally, a story riddled with romance that you don't hate. It, but it's not like... It's not about the it's, romance. Yeah, it's... I mean, they're, it's like heavily tied in, but at the same time, like, the gushy parts, like, where well, after Kid Omega does his little sonic blasting and gets... Uh, all, he gets a bloody nose, and Gwen's like, oh, I was oh, so brave I could kiss you. If you weren't passed out and, and did, blood cover all over your lips. Right. So like, maybe when you're conscious and we clean up your nose. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Like, you did it me to him. That's awesome. <laughs> it, was, it was a fun little dialogue. It was, yeah, it was well played. Uh, yeah, no, kudos, Kelly Thompson and friends. Next up, we have another event. Um, this is almost the end of event. This is the end of this particular title. There's going to be one more title by the name of... Good lord, this comic's heavy. Um, Infinity Wars Infinity next month. And that's going to wrap it all up. So, this... Um, all right, because there's so much going on here, let's... Let's just move on through. We get Loki realizing that he's pretty much been defeated. And this is... And he... He sends the stones off as they should be, realizing that we're in the situation he's in. Him having the stones is just useless. So, let's go defeat Gamora, or, um, oh, I forget what they call her. But yeah, no. So, let me get, uh, Adam Warlock pretty much determining that the way we defeat this situation to be able to make sure that all of the Warp World characters aren't necessarily vanished from the face of the earth and regular earth is all good is I create two universes right. and um, the warp world will just be held within the soul stone so essentially that's what you get there really to me that's my biggest take on this whole book is warp world will remain canon the soul stone will be revisited iron hammer soldier supreme arachnite Ghost Panther, these characters are still very active. I like that, because this gives us room to revisit those no. in more depth, rather than just well, not only little that, throwaway two-comic-book series. Not only that, th I like that because it actually it gave me a reason why the story was done. Because without that, I'm like, why did you do this? Right. Which has been a pointless event that, okay, hey, that happened. Remember that? Yeah, that was awkward. Yeah, it was just a, oh, so Gamora gets the Infinity Stones, and instead of wiping out half, she just folds the universes, and then shit gets confusing, and blah, 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 and then right ourselves into a corner. But then you realize, oh, the, the Warp World. We get a payoff. Like, that's what I was trying to say. We needed a payoff out of an event. Right. 
um, with the Spider Geddon event, like what what was the payoff we get there? Um, we get a couple more series. Well, uh, Spider Norman is a thing, uh, and yeah. Spider's Man. Spider's Man. Yes. Um, the payoff. So, and the payoff being that these characters are still going to be doing things like nobody died, except for ooh, Spider UK. He and did. Spider Noir. And Spider Noir. Mmm, that's sad. So, yeah. But anyways, back to Infinity Wars. Um, yeah, no, everybody makes happy in the all of that. Is there like a, uh-oh, bum 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 moment at the end? I don't remember. Like I said, there's still a little bit of title to be told. I don't know, Adam Warlock is... Yeah, such an enigmatic character. I don't know enough about him. They're, they're amping him up to be something major in this whole Infinity War uh, oh, shenanigans. That's the fucking big bummer in this one. So we have a uh, a death. Or not necessarily a death. Not a death. A loss. Um, Drax stays behind along with another character that... So the story, this is where the story gets real weird when they start explaining this. And they don't really explain it so much in this story as they do the other tie-in event that we won't really talk about. It's the Fallen Guardian. Mm -hmm. um, and that's pretty much just explaining what I'm fixing to say here. Um, so Drax is technically two people, kind of, because there was a guy that experienced loss and blah, blah, blah. And in this mystical way, in order for him to survive, he was cast out into Drax's body. Another big payoff we get here is that um, Drax's daughter, Moon Dragon, will be a part of the Guardians of the Galaxy. That was one of the characters I was like, who is that? When we were on the cover, mm -hmm. and I felt silly. I was like, I don't know who that is. Well, now I know. It's Moon Dragon, Drax's oh. daughter. So we do get some Drax blood in the Guardians okay. coming out. Interesting. Yes. So, yeah, no, this this story had a whole, like, swirly Drax thing, um, but ultimately, the team lost him. He stayed behind in the Soul Realm with the, the to keep the portal open, and it was pretty much... I, guess, I, I took it as it was a suicide mission type of thing. And even Warlock. I, I, what I thought was fucked up was Adam Warlock was like, Drax, you are the one. It's like, you just straight up called his ass out to die. <laughs> Huh. So or to be returning later on. Maybe I don't know, but it was very much implied that like. Well, we didn't see him die, so Marvel no, always has the option. No, no, for sure. No, Drax ain't dead, but it, it was implied that like Adam Warlock did the the shitty thing and was just like you must sacrifice yourself. Death, sentenced him to death, pretty much. But, yeah, I don't know. There's still Adam Warlock's story to be told in this. I'm sure that's going to be in the final issue. Because the way it ends with Adam Warlock going, I feel like a piece of me is still missing. So after the universes are all, you know, put back in order, there's still shit that needs to go down. Not to mention Gamora was also sent off, too. And I forgot what that whole story was, but Adam Warlock sent her away. So, you know, you get this whole moment where... Groot and Star Lord are like, yeah, this this sucks. We lost two today, like Drax and Gamora, like, yeah. So I don't know. This was a. This was like the actual payoff of the story itself. I don't. I don't. I don't know. But what we get out of all of this, like the whole event, like all of like we get Infinity Warps. We're gonna get a new Guardians of the Galaxy team. Um, we get Drax lore. Uh, I like all of that very much. This, to me, this this um, event has been very much worth reading. I I don't regret it at all. Lots of lots of stuff to talk about in here. Like, it was kind of a cool sight of seeing Gamora. I keep forgetting what the fuck they called her, but she, I mean, she killed Thanos. That was that was a thing that happened this, in this event. Definitely like, killed Thanos. Like we got some fun character you know. concepts. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, I'll we'll see what this last issue brings, and then it's pretty much leading up to a new Guardians of the Galaxy title. So super stoked! Uncanny X Men number six moving along at a weekly pace as it has been. 
Legacy numbering 625, Matthew Rosenberg, Ed Rasson, Kelly Thompson, Yul Dre Sinar, and Rachel Rosenberg. Elizabeth Tork did the cover. Um, so, in this one, it's uh, picking up where we left off. Psylocke gets into um, Angel's head, ultimately driving him into becoming Archangel. Arch yep. And and out of X Man's charm. Yeah, yeah. So um, he uh, he he's not so happy about the dark side of himself coming about. Uh, he ends up actually turning on Magneto, mm -hmm. and he's very confused about the situation. Psylocke asks him, "Are you with us, or are you like what's going on?" And his answer is, "I'm undecided." Mm -hmm. Um, but I feel like he makes up his mind almost immediately, to be honest, because he's on the team fighting with them next chance he gets, so... It might turn into a case of keep your enemies close. I don't know. I don't know. But the fact is, is that in this issue, we get Archangel back. That's we do. That's fucking awesome. Uh, we also get um, a confrontation with X-Man and the rest of the X-Team. You know, Jean shows up in her ways, and X-Men gives her the ultimatum, pretty much, like, join or die, as a villain does. Right. Um, so, you know, and at this point, we don't have the four horsemen of salvation. We have three horsemen, because old fucking angels there, um, fighting with the old X-Men. Uh, and then, and then, this is the really cool thing, is uh, as we've seen, like, the trainees have just been kind of left in the dust, and they're more interested in what Legion can bring to the table. Right. Uh, Glob goes out and recruits Jamie Madrox in the last issue, and so then we see uh, multiple men back with mm -hmm. the team, with the trainees. So then the trainees show up with Legion and multiple men, along with the rest of the X-Men, and we get ready to see what we think is the showdown. Right. And then, you know, Legion is trying to... Um, do his thing and make X Man go away, and it doesn't work out as planned. Not at all. No, not at all. We get like this, uh, um, almost like this wasteland situation looking like. Right. Well, we have this good back and forth, and he Legion's idea is to send him back to his own timeline. Timeline. So now we get the X Men team in his world, but with this new, crazy awesome design to him. Yeah, yeah, and they're all very confused as to what's going on. Like, they know it's... Uh, they even say, like, what is this? This is bad. This is really bad. So they, uh, they you know, this is... Shit got fucked up. And Definitely. And I would think that Legion... Like, I, I, I find it weird that the only, the only people you see in this shot are the trainees. Like, you don't see any of the other X-Men, you don't see Legion, you see X-Man well, and the trainees. I believe... In just a couple panels before this, doesn't uh, don't they attack X Man and X Man just like does a big explosion and knocks them all out? Yeah, no, he has them all subdued like via right. But then the teens come and so I, I think maybe right. they're the only ones who came with him. And, well, I'm just uh, like I'm just curious as to if yeah, like who else came? Like is is this did they transfer to a new dimension? Is this just an illusionary situation? I just I find it odd that the only people being shown in this not odd but interesting that the only people being shown in the panel are the trainees. Right. All so. their friends who were previously behind X Men are no longer behind him. Right. So yeah, no fun stuff. Um, this this team is doing an amazing job. Yeah, I'm almost continues to pick up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's gonna be weekly for four more issues and then. Um, I think it goes to monthly after that. It's going to slow down production, but they are sure giving us a lot of uncanny they are. X-Men. Definitely a lot. Yeah. But it's continued to impress. Yeah, no. I, I hope it continues to do that. Yeah, it just keeps ramping up. Amazing Spider-Man number 12, Legacy 813. Lifetime Achievement Part 2. Nick Spencer, Ryan Otley, Cliff Rathburn, Laura Martin. Cover by Ryan Otley and Laura Martin. Fucking sweet cover. Scorpion and whatnot. 
So it picks up where we left off. J. Jonah Jameson got an invite by the Kingpin for a Lifetime Achievement Award. Spider-Man had to be the presenter. Spider-Man says, Hail no, goes off and confronts J. Jonah Jameson about that. Then Scorpion shows up. They start running. Here we are, issue number 12. So, they run in, they run in, they get chased into this area, and all of a sudden we start seeing, like, illusionary... Um, matters. Um, they start seeing flashbacks of J. Jonah Jameson's origin story, and that's essentially what this book is. It's the upbringing of J. Jonah Jameson, his motivations, um, and essentially what that is is he had a an abusive father. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a young reporter, lost his wife tragically. Son was an astronaut, got involved with Spider-Man somehow negatively. They don't really... I forget what the story is behind that. They don't really touch in on this that specifically. thats I guess that's canon that you're supposed to know before. At least that's how I take it. Um, or maybe they just want to keep it obscured enough. Maybe. That's, that's possible, too. That could very well be. Um, but what we get out of this is Jonah... Or Jameson's uh, motivation to start disliking Spider-Man comes with an incident between Spider-Man and his astronaut son. So, yeah. Oh. Yeah. And um, there's... Uh, like I said, it's, it's just a whole lot of that. A part of the origin is after that whole situation, jo Jameson starts developing something called the Scorpion Formula. Which is used to, you know, it's it's kind of a super soldier type of thing, but scorpiony. <laughs> okay. So I guess, I'm guessing that that's where we get the origin of Scorpion from, like how he was formed, like through J Jameson's through actual thing. J. Jonah Jameson. And then through his years of trying to develop ways of huh. feeding Spidey, he comes across his second wife, Marla. Not Martha. Marla, for all you fucking Batman vs. Superman <laughs> haters. <laughs> um, I really think that that's... Yeah. So anyways, uh, they developed the Spider Slayer suit, and, you know, that's that's how they connect. You know? Was, yeah. And then it kind of flashes back to reality. Scorpion's still chasing them. They even said, like, oh, yeah, I wonder what happened with these guys. And um, they happen to have, because the splashback thing is actually, like there's actually a Spider Slayer suit around, or several. J Jameson is able to manipulate the Spider Slayer suits and defeating Scorpion and all of the, I don't know, it's funny, it's goofy, it's a classic Spidey huh? story. Like it's, right. it's It's a Spider-Man story, it's, so, sure. it's, it, it, it's told in Spider-Man fashion. Um, more than anything, it's a J. Jonah Jameson story. But, well, you know, after they just defeat Scorpion, mm -hmm. uh, the roof lifts up, and then we see Big Man. Oh, so, <laughs> uh, another Spidey villain there. So, Sounds um, like a fun read. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, it's, like I said, classic Spider-Man. It's great. It's great. Uh, is it the best one out of, uh, Spencer's 12 issues? No. But is it fun? Fuck yeah. Keep reading it. No reason not to. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Indeed. For sure. Marvel Knights number four. Fucking Vita, Leia, Donny Cates, Joshua Casara, and Matt Miller. Uh, cover by Jeff Shaw, Rain Barreto. Uh, so, we're finally getting some insight as to the memory loss that's been occurring with our beloved heroes in Hell's Kitchen. Um, we, I'm just going to go out and say it. It's Reed Richards' fault. He fucked up everything. <laughs> <laughs> Him and Chala are creating... or possess this... I think Reed creates the device. Um, and it Probably. Is, yeah. Uh, a device. It's a memory-wiping device. Worldwide. Worldwide. And um, so right then and there, it explains... That's what happened. Uh, you don't know in what essence, how it happened, but you know now why everybody is derpader and confused. 
right. the wrong people got a hold of this. Right. Uh, Reed gave Chala Chala the responsibility of holding on to this device. Chala was like, we should probably just get rid of it. And he was like, nah, I have a feeling we're going to need it eventually. We might need this. Right. And as T'Challa, I can't say, I keep saying his name wrong. T'Challa. T'Challa. Black Panther is taking the device. It gets hijacked. Is that what happens? I I believe so, yeah. We definitely showed somebody's breaking in, and then we cut back to the Black Panther who's not the Black Panther. Right. So John. Right. So now the device has been used at this point. Now we're seeing memory erased Black Panther, and he's getting all types of flashbacky memory situations is right. how I'm taking it. Yeah, so he's, he's getting like the flashbacks of his ancestors speaking to him. So he's getting more of a clue as to what he's... his originality mm-hmm. and his questions are. Like, he's he doesn't have a little bunch of little people dropping off one-word notes and stuff to him. Like, he's actually getting, like, physical visions of his past. Mental so, visions, yeah. yeah. Or that's not mental. The opposite of physical. Good luck. <laughs> Um, Psychological. Yeah, yeah, that stuff. So he he's going about this in a very uh, you know in a very different manner compared to the rest of the heroes, and this is really just a T'Challa story. Like you see a little bit of Frank Castle in here um, as a cop. Yeah. But then he realizes, oh, I, okay, I am the Black Panther, and he puts on the cool, not not the cool, not like the suit that we know. No, but, but definitely a. a Cool rendition Repre- of it. Representation Bandana, of the Bandana, all pants. black, yeah. boots tucked in, yeah. pants tucked in the boots. And then he has clues leading to a secret lair, hideout, bad people place where we see a mega team. Octopus, Black Mass, Taskmaster, Shocker. Um, this, uh, oh yeah, Kingpin. Look at that. Fucking Kingpin running shit. Yeah. So, Kingpin. And their lawyer. And, the, and Yes, and their lawyer. Kingpin was the one seemingly in charge of this mass memory device thing. Cause that's I don't what they think c- so, because even he seemed to have questions. I think even he had his memories. Well, but raised. they have the device, though, I think. Like, that's the thing, is they have the device. So... But wasn't Fisk asking, like, who and, is an this? Issue, an issue one, he was confused, too. Right. So, what the... Right, right. What's, what, what the fuck? Yeah. Would we just have one more of these? Uh, no, I don't have no idea. I think I I have no idea. What is this five, four? I'm mm-hmm. gonna say at least at least two more. I'm gonna so? say two more. I oh. think it's gonna go to six. Oh, okay. Yeah. I I've been enjoying this for sure. This has been my favorite issue so far. Just oh. because oh, just because I'm getting answers now. Right. Like it, all the pieces are starting to fall yes, in line. Yes. Yes. I felt ridiculous reading the last ones. I'm like, I know there's. I'm supposed to be able to put more of this together. No, I've just been waiting for fucking page one, panel yeah. four of issue four. Of I'm this often in the dark recently with how comics are. Again, I've only been back into them for 11, 12 weeks now. Yeah, so. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm no pro either, man. I've only been reading for a couple of years again, you know, consistently. So, yeah, I don't know everything. There's there's stuff that's been, I'm sh- yeah, it's... Well, it's been fun theorizing with you and both of us being in the dark being able to talk about this. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, yeah, next up, we have a book that you would like to talk about, one that I am not following, Captain America. Captain America, Winter in America, Part 6. Um, we got we got a good team on this, in my opinion. For ink, we have Jerry Allen Gwillian. For writing, we have Tanisi. Tanishi Coates. Tanishi Coates and Lionel Francis. Yes. yes. Um, for color artists, we have Sonny Go. And yeah, this cover was by Alex Ross. Yes, it was. M- it's a beautiful cover. Beautiful cover. I love colors. Um, again, this is just more of the same. This is kind of a redemption story of Captain America or him still feeling out of place because of the events when he was dead. So it's tying into... Now, now, as a non-Captain America reader, I read issue one and thought, I got better stuff to spend my money on. It's just... Because it was during the load of Marvel 1s at that time. Like, they were just dropping number 1s on us constantly. Couldn't take them all. Captain sure. America was a sacrifice. Um, with that being said, uh, I didn't really... not really caught up on the whole Secret Empire story. I just know that Neither there was... Neither am I. Yeah. 
So it's tying into this, though. It is. What you're saying. So, yes. So Captain America was dead. There was a fake Captain America who was part of Hydra, who conquered the world. And still, the world, while they know that wasn't Captain America, isn't ready to accept Captain America. I mean, America is definitely in this like vulnerable, fractured state still. Um, and they're still trying to rebuild the pieces. So he's feeling very out of place. But this issue is more focusing on... Um, Alexander Larkin. Now, Alexander Larkin was one of the generals in charge of the Winter Soldier program. He was one of the men who gave orders to Bucky. When Red Skull came in possession of the Cosmic Cube, he was killed by the Winter Soldier, but at Larkin's command. But gotcha. right before his death, Red Skull imparted his consciousness into Larkin. So they shared a body, and they, they battled back and forth for uh, dominance. Well, Larkin was murdered. Um, there's a couple scenes that leads to me to believe that maybe it was his wife. I don't really know. I didn't read it. But it's kind of hinted at in this one. Okay. But anyway, he is now back alive because his wife, with the work of, Alexand of uh, Sorceress was able to resurrect him through scientific and magical means. So he's back. But every time he looks in the mirror, or sometimes when he closes his eyes for reflection, we, we get this visage of him being the Red Skull. So I'm not sure if it's still him battling that part that was with Red Skull, or if Red Skull is back with him. Hmm. But yeah, we kind of get like a, a slight recap of this. Um, it's this more... Alexander and his wife talking through most of this book, but we cut to a scene where a maid is knocking on a door and <gasps> somebody's been killed. And we leave off with an investigation. Nick Fury is investigating the death of one Thaddeus Ross. Thunder oh, the Thunderbolt is dead. Shit. Thunderbolt mm -hmm. Ross. And they lead you to believe that Steve Rogers is the number one suspect. Oh shit! Mm -hmm. Well, look at that. We got all who's done it. Who yep. done it? Captain Rogers. Who done it? I think he did it. I think Captain Rogers still bad. Um, I think that Captain Rogers, the 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 evil Captain Rogers that was running around, is actually the good Captain Rogers. And everybody's just... Well, I don't believe so. I have no time, idea what I'm talking about, dude. I'm this whole time <laughs> they're talking about how you know Larkin's still feeling out of place from that death. You know, like he he died and now he's back and he has a he's combating the consequences for that as one would, and he's still saying you know you believe we should kill Captain America and she's like no you did that, but you, you killed Steve Roger, but you can't kill the idea of Captain America. Uh, one of them. So you have to kill his the idea of him. So they kill Ross. Gotcha. And right now he's been at odds or disobeying orders from him so yeah I mean it, it's it's leading up to a good story I don't think it's a Brian Wayne story it doesn't sound like but it but it's definitely up my alley I'm enjoying it and I, I if you like Captain America and you were spurned by the uh, you know the, the last run maybe now it's time to come back I'm currently enjoying this uh, my Captain America is Falcon fucking yeah Okay. Yeah, that was okay. that was my favorite Captain America. I don't know. I just I like Steve Rogers as Steve Rogers. I don't like him with a shield. I don't know. I'm weird. I just the character never did it with me. I'm not into the the golden boy type. Of, I like I like I like flawed heroes, and sure. Steve Rogers is a little too perfect for me. That's just me though. I've still always viewed him as a flawed hero because. He has his own personal ideals. Yes, he's kind of a golden boy, but he's always been kind of the rebel. He's not afraid to go against authority for what he believes in, and that's caused him quite a bit of trouble. Yeah. Yeah, but in the long run, like, really what he believes in is still the right thing. <laughs> he's just authority. He's not always How right. How <laughs> dare we have a hero with morals? <laughs> this is unforgivable. Yeah. <laughs> So all he's doing is just fighting harder for the power. Like I don't, I don't hate Captain America. No, no, fair enough, for, for sure. Just, and I, I know the comics you like, and I don't think this is your story. Yeah, I, I just, I just like Sam Wilson. I thought he was more interesting as, as the Cap. Sure, definitely uh, a hero and a lot more conflict. 
Has there been it through what are these six issues in now? Yep, six issues. Has you seen any signs of Sam Wilson at all through this arc? <sighs> yeah, I believe so. Yes, yeah. I, I believe we have. Because I think it'd be <sighs> very strange if he if he saw no Sam at all. Because I haven't. It seen hasn't him really at been all. focused on him, and it's again I've been reading these as they come out, so you yeah. know. Few and far between, but yeah, yeah, yeah they're coming out so. at like crazy rates too. Like sometimes five and six weeks apart. Yeah, it seemed it seemed to be pretty inconsistent. But yeah, and I think you're gonna get another Captain America again in like not this week, but next week. So it's gonna like it's it's strange the the production rate of this book. Like it goes six weeks and then it goes biweekly. It's, you know, I've got so much on my reading list right now that it doesn't bother me one bit. Yeah, I can't fucking keep track. I really can't. I just. I just remember thinking, like, oh, you know, like, and this book doesn't come out very often. And I looked again, and I was like, oh, it's coming out again almost immediately. Yeah, so, yeah, it's it's been weird. Yeah, But it is what it is, man, I guess. It's been worth it for me. It, I, the I, I, that, as a fan, this has been a good sense of nostalgia, and it's done a pretty good job of easing me into what's been happening. Well, I will say one thing, that every single fucking cover that has been published on this book, or at least cover A, that I've noticed has all been done by. Oh, there have been Alex so many Ross, good variants man. too. I mean, Alex there's Ross is killing it. Oh, agreed, definitely. Well, as he does, he was on Good Morning America. Actually, um, he was celebrated on Good Morning America uh, yesterday or the day before. Or I don't know. Whenever they do that shit. Sure. But yeah, I thought that was really cool. That Alex Ross was celebrated on, you know, morning. Heck yeah. Yeah. That's that, that's that's a big platform. That's cool. Uh, yeah, man. Comic books being celebrated on that manner, like, Hell but yeah. he also is. Like, Cheers, Alex. Yeah, he. I mean, Alex Ross, his his artistic. He took drawing comic book characters. Well, t- well, we can have a whole fucking Alex Ross episode eventually one day. But <laughs> I, I, I love that and Immortal Hulk, like those covers that he's doing. Oh, oh phenomenal! Book. And he's. I can't believe he's consistently like. Marvel is just shelling out the money. For him to be like, hey, Alex Ross, we want you to do, you know, fucking, what are that, like, eight issues of Immortal Hulk now? And he's gonna, you know, there's no sign of him slowing down. Like, that's, that's a lot been of pretty quality. It's a lot of fucking painting. Like, this guy's doing, oh my god. That's, oh, legend status. Sorry, I had to ramble on about the covers, because that's been my favorite part about the Captain America. You got anything else to say about Captain America? That'll be it for this week. All right, Punisher number five, World War Frank part five, number 233, legacy printing numbers, Matthew Rosenberg, Sisman Kredansky, and Antonio Fabella, covered by Greg Smallwood. And may I say, this book is everything you want in Punisher. It's more World War Frank, for you, sure. You read it? I did. Good. Because, uh, uh, Frank, frankly... I'd say you'd be missing out if you're not reading Punisher right now. And I honestly, I'm, I'm thinking that this is, well, there's no thinking. This is definitely one of Marvel's top books, top five. Absolute, easy top five. Easy top five. Punisher, like, it's hard, it's hard to give a, t- a book that title after only four issues, but I think after five solid issues, which we get here, this being the fifth, it's safe to say that Matthew Rosenberg and the Punisher is a match made in heaven. Definitely, that it's it's been a great dark story with a dark aesthetic, but not without lack of lots of color. And oh, not just, uh, yeah, well yeah, no, I mean the art is amazing. Uh, the the storytelling as far as the the brutal, brutal, brutal ways of Frankie Castle. I think there's three different body parts that get separated from. A three different people in this book. We get a there finger, was the finger, the hand, and, and the head. And a right, head. right. Yeah, and all done by Frank. So essentially, what we're getting here is uh, Frank's at the Hydra recruitment center looking for Zemo. Um, he fights one of his cronies who possesses two rings of the Mandarin. Uh, but Frank just, he cuts off his fucking hand. Just like that. Oh, he got rings of the man, boom, cuts off his hand. Learn something from that fucking, you know, well, I'm just going to go off and say it. If Punisher were in Infinity War, there would not be a sequel. <laughs> yeah. no, I mean, that's very well possible. He would have cut it off. You don't pull the glove off. He cut off the arm, you stupid fucks. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Learn something from Frankie here. Matthew Rosenberg should have wrote the movie. Sorry, Russo brothers. Anyways, 
Um, really what we're getting here is just Frankie just working his way through a bunch of fucking dipshits. Then he comes, he gets led up to Nick Fury, and he thinks Nick Fury's the chameleon, so he, like, does the scooby Right, thing tries to pull the mask off of him. <laughs> 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 and, uh, Nick Fury in his ways, hey, motherfucker! Um, does he actually say it? No, he doesn't. God damn it. <laughs> he needed to say motherfucker there. <laughs> But, um, really, he's like, well, are you going to stop me? And he's like, nah, nah. But these guys are. And we get, like, this cool, somewhat-looking Defender-style team. And I say Defenders because we get Power Man and Iron Fist, which is half of the Defenders. But then you also get fucking Winter Soldier and Hawkeye. Yeah. It's All good team, there. But they don't really work very well together yet. No. <laughs> Cap- Not against Frankie. No, no one works together. Frankie's just a man, dude. He's the man. So, yeah, he just plows through these guys. Um, well, eventually he gets taken out, but sure, not with any steez. It's almost accidentally. He but goes he gets down. what he wanted. He gets taken straight to Zemo. He does. Um, so, and Nick's whole, Fury's whole thing is, look, um, I'm making a deal with Zemo. He gets you. You get to go to Zemo. And Zemo's deal with me is, in exchange for you... You guys kill each other. You guys get to kill each other, but Zemo is to never come to the United States again. Like, that's really the bargain. Right, I'm there. keeping you from killing people all over the right. streets. I'm keeping him from killing people all over the streets. It's a win-win situation. Right. And even Zemo acknowledges that. He's like, you know, I'm sure Fury just thinks that, you know, we're just going to kill each other. And right. like, when, so, yeah. And that's that's where it leaves off. Uh, frankly? I'm going to keep saying frankly as a pun. Um... <laughs> I want to see more Power Man, Iron Fist, Winter Soldier, Hawkeye together. Like, I, can I we just get is, that fucking spin on? I think this is possible for sure. I just you didn't want. Wa- you didn't read a uh, Winter Soldier, did you? No. Well, they have uh, Power Man and Clint in that one as well, so oh, it it, sure. it could be. Maybe they're amping up for a new team, perhaps. I don't know. Well, because I, I, we already got a defender. Like we got the original Defenders back now. We got Silver Surfer, Hulk, Doctor Strange, and. Uh, the other guy. Who is it? Namor. Namor. Thank you. So, we got the original Defenders back. Um, we got a half a Defenders team hooked up with this Winter Soldier and Hawkeye. Oh, I'm sorry. Hawkeye needs to be a part of everything. I'm just going to go out Oh, and you're, you're a huge <laughs> fan now, huh? I don't know why, man. That's awesome. No, I'm glad to hear it. I mean, I, I've always been a big fan uh, of Hawkeye. I'm glad to see more people on the Clint train. Yeah, it's not necessarily that I'm a huge fan. I'm a huge fan of seeing him, if that makes sense. Sure. Oh, he, he's, he's a, a cool fun character. He's just a guy, but he's a guy who never misses. But when the artist has his voice, like he makes for the most... He creates an interesting chemistry with the team. He can be that dramatic action-packed character, but he just brings a, a sense of wit and cunning with him yeah, that he it, it also just be, mixes well. Right. He can also be the babysitter of the West Coast Avengers. Dude. He's a man of many roles, for sure. Fucking, uh, Clint, Clint for president, Hawkeye for president. Talking about Hawkeye, we have some more of that in this next book. Yeah, Hawkeye came up in this next book. Uh, this next book is called Dead Man Logan, number two of a 12-part maxi-series. Sins of the Father, Part 2. Ed Brisson, Mike Henderson, Nolan Woodard, covered by Declan Shelby. It's kind of a cool cover there. Uh, Mysterio yeah. with the claws and all that. Mysterio is a big part of this book. He is. The, uh, so, really the motivation behind this b- whole book with Logan. He gets this... Uh, well, he, he in his world, Mysterio is responsible for illusionizing him into killing all of the X-Men. Like right. that word, illusionizing? And other heroes. I couldn't think of the word, illusionizing. Anyways, Mesmerizing. Um, me- there you go. Creating an illusion. So it starts out with uh, Spider-Man getting shot down. Just kidding. It's not Spider-Man. It's Mysterio showing off his powers of illusion to uh, um, Sin. And, oh, you know what? I said Sin's motivation in another book. I got this book and another book mixed up earlier. Y'all can hate me for that on Twitter if you want. Anyways, my dog just farted. <laughs> He's been doing that all night. Right next to me. Yeah, but I bet this fancy new mic picked that one up. <laughs> oh, Jarvis. He's so happy. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> we get uh, Sin sitting down. With, not really sitting down at this point. 
but um, chatting with uh, uh, Mistress, uh, what is her name? Uh, Miss Sinister. I was gonna say Lady Death. Miss Sinister. Good God, I'm all over the fucking place with this book. They're they, start, they start to blend together after a while. Yeah, yeah, we've been talking about a lot of books. So, uh, Mysterio is showing off his power to create an illusion um, of... Yeah, they tested it with Spider-Man. It wasn't Spider-Man. These guys got to get their rocks off by shooting at Spider-Man. Yeah, they get to they, they they vent their frustration by finally visually killing their nemesis. Yes. So, really, what it's showing here, uh, really, all this is showing is reminding any new readers of um, what Mysterio's power may be, is. Sure. Yeah. Um, so then it cuts to Clint and Hawkeye in a bar, all tore up, um, and they're, you know, going back and forth saying, you know, it's, we've been going to all these bars. A lot of bars. Yeah. Well, we just got five more bars. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> And then we get the uh, the old I don't know it's, it's really what we're getting out of all of this instead of just going page by page. It's um Logan tracking down Mysterio. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mysterio has reserves about being on this team seemingly like he doesn't really want to be a part of this because it, this isn't the Mysterio that did what he did. Right. This it, is a Mysterio who is ready to give up and just retire right. and not get beaten up anymore. Right. This is But now we have a new evil team who might use this a bit differently. Because they get a glimpse into Logan's head uh, old man Logan's head and that's how they get the idea of gotcha. We use Mysterio to turn people against each other and right. then we get a taste of that at the end when Logan goes off to think fight he thinks he's fighting Mysterio and uh who's the other one? Taskmaster? Taskmaster, and it turns out he's fighting the fucking Avengers. Yeah. Like, so, uh, already through issue two, we get some pretty sweet confrontation. Well, and they do some foreshadowing here that, you know, even Logan says, well, I'm not worried about them doing it to me. The X-Men already have a failsafe against me and now. Not only but that. But doing it to somebody else. Right. He, he even says, he's like, I got word that the actual Logan's out and about now, and it could be done with anyone, and that's what kind of convinces Hawkeye to where he's like... We got a fucking point. Let's go. Let's go do this. Right. And yes. Yeah, so I'm actually I'm liking this book a lot more than I thought I would. Not that I went into this with low expectations, but Ed Brisson's doing a really good job. Fucking sure, definitely. On the story, like this is the end of Old Man Logan. We got ten more issues and no more Old Man Logan. So yeah. Lastly, lastly, the last book that we want to touch on this week, um, another ending. Uh, this is the end of Darth Vader. It is. At least this this run. Darth right. Vader is still very much It's the thing. end of this team. Well, you, well yeah. It's, I mean, we're going to get... It's, there's not going to be an issue 26. It's, right. The next Darth Vader book will be a new, a new volume. Um, more Darth Vader to be told. So, uh, in the last book, Vader defeats Moman. He goes through the portal. Want to tell us our team? Oh, yeah, my bad. The team, Charles Soul, Giuseppe Camincoli, Cam Smith, Daniel Orlandini, and Giuseppe Camincoli decided to go out with a major bang on this last cover. I like it. The Bright, vibrant, energetic. Worthy. I would love to have, actually, a version of, That'd of, make of a this cover. a great version, yes. for sure. That's amazing. I mean, Camincoli's killed it with all these covers, but... But show. But show. <laughs> oh, good God. <laughs> um, we get Vader walking through the Valley of the Shadow of Death, a.k.a. this portal. Right, it kind of like this force-willed, out-of-body experience. Yeah, and it's kind of like this whole everything that he's been through type of situation. I, my favorite page is actually like a this two-page spread where you see fucking uh, all of these Jedi Masters of the past. Right, with their the entire council up. and all, all, all the Masters. I think the best thing about this page is it's Mace Windu and his lonely purple lightsaber <laughs> hitting the fucking... <laughs> right, and you, just, you know it says bad motherfucker on the bottom of it. it well, it did, but um, they uh, they had to remove it. <sighs> fucking did. <dude. laughs> no, I mean, what, really what the internet is all blowing up about is this panel where we get the, you know, the, the incarnation of, hey, this is Darth Vader's father. It's 
Palpatine, who... He gets jesus Right, well, he, he force-willed his birth, basically. Anakin is um, Star Wars Jesus, is uh, what I get out of this. He was, but now we have a father that's not a god. Yeah, but it's still he was still born in a yeah. god way. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean the now whole the whole the, idea is that he's kind of having like these relived moments of his life, and he he seems to kind of be killing them all one by one. We're, we're seeing him walk through all these memories and regrowing again. Is that, is that what do you mean by killing them? Like I, I, I honestly, I was so lost in this book going through. I was uh, I was expecting twenty pages of. Anakin and uh, Padme, like being all gushy gushy and like ending the story in a magical way. Nice. This is she, not she what died I again. Thought. Yeah, it's just, he, so he's literally just going right. through. And he's not Anakin. I mean, he learned it. He's not Anakin. This spirit Padme jumps off a cliff. I mean, he's he can't have what he wants. He hasn't found a way to bring her back, and then. He, he's reliving all these memories. He's going through and he's killing these Jedi Masters. He you know, goes through and he sees uh, Obi Wan and and Emperor Palpatine fighting. There's the lightning versus the saber, um, and you know the, the Emperor turns to Anakin and he strikes him down with his own lightning. He he sees Padme and she she falls and he loses her again and you know, it just ends with this no. But then we get this blue light. We find this vision of the Force. And, you know, Vader's still standing there against this blue light. But then all of a sudden it overtakes him and he comes to in his body. I, I think this was a, rem a, a kind of a vision or a prophecy of, of Luke, perhaps. That's what yeah. I take away from it. You know, then he calls the Emperor. You know, the Emperor says, well, I was about ready to find a new apprentice. I haven't heard from you so, for so long. Did Son. you learn what you needed to... I must afar. Yes. Now, just simple. No explanation. Darth Vader's motives and reasons are his own. So he doesn't... We don't get like this, You was my daddy this whole... Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Good. That's not, that's not Vader's story. And, you know, if they wanted to give this as canon, cool. This is canon. Doesn't change anything. Um, this, this is definitely canon. Marvel Comics are Star Wars canon. Like, that is... This this is this is what it is now. It's still not a story of how Palpatine is Darth Vader's father. We now learn that okay, well, he he is the one who set everything in motion, which kind of makes sense. Why was Maul on this planet? Why would Maul want to get involved in trying to stop Anakin from going aboard with Qui Gon? It, it it makes sense enough to me. I, okay, I have no problem with it. Well, you're much more of a Star Wars person than I am too. So that I mean. Yeah. I, I, I didn't not enjoy this story. It's just not what I expected at all. Like, it de was definitely open for interpretation. I think it was very much supposed to be that way. You end it the way you need to. Like, what does it mean to you? Uh, I, I, up, to, up for interpretation, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, maybe we could reach out to Charles Solon. Or eventually he'll give us his interpretation. If you're Charles Soul or in contact with Charles Souls, please hit us up at the Cheers to Comics uh, Twitter. We would love to hear from you. At Cheers to Comics. <laughs> um, so that's all I have to talk about as far as what I read. I read a l actually a few more books than we talked about, but for uh, time's sake, I think we should. For sake of expediency and everything else I read, there was bits and pieces, but... Yeah, nothing that we... I don't know. Not content worthy. Just stuff that... Yeah, good filler stuff. Anyways, this next segment, if you will, if you want to call it a segment, is the part I call Wall Books, where it's just a, uh, I go over the book, it's really just a, uh, an ode to cover artists, yep. what it is, favorite covers, things that, uh, series that I'm not even necessarily reading, all that good stuff. Um, let's start out with my first Wall Book. Batman 61, the variant done by Francesco Martina. Uh, it's a great man, cover. Dude, the blacks and the reds and the just the, the subtle expression on Bat's face. It's, <coughs> it's fucking awesome, man. Martina's been knocking all these Batman covers out of the park. Yeah, yeah. There's speculation that there could be some potential 
financial gain once all of these uh these these Batman Francesco Mattina covers have been done. So I don't know, I heard it through the grapevine that as a collection that could be somewhat valuable down the road. I don't know, that's how it is with all fucking comic books, so who knows? No one fucking knows. Personally, I think Matina doing Batman covers though is credible. Priceless. Yeah. Priceless is a good word. Ten bucks. <laughs> uh, next, price, Brian. <laughs> next up, we have Catwoman number six, done mm. by Art Germ. He's been killing these Catwoman covers, dude. Killing them, indeed. He. Uh, this is a Christmas cover. I love this cover, and it's still, even though it's a Christmas cover, it's gonna be up on my wall for at least a year. As soon as the wall's filled, which it's not far away from being filled now, I'm gonna You're have to close. start rotating out. But uh, this is one that's. Let's find more walls. Wall. Yeah, yeah, just... I'll build a wall. There you go. No, and I'm gonna get you to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> Next up... Uh, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> the, the, the Marvel Knights. Number... Yeah. Four? Is that what this was? I don't know, it's a virgin. And I forget. What yeah, did we talk four. about? It is number four. So I've been collecting the Care Anders Connectors variants, and this particular one's got the mugs of Black Panther and Doctor Doom. That's a that's a cool looking Doom right there. This is this is this has been a cool connect like it's four right now. So I don't know if this is gonna be a five or a six issue connecting series, mm -hmm. but I've. They, I'm, I don't know, I'm going to have to find a fun frame for them. This one might actually have to get framed. I have a bunch of framed comics, but this one as a connecting set. I you got to look it on your wall. Yeah, for sure. Peace out! Um, did you have any wall books this week? Uh, no, I have you some don't top have picks, wall. but I'm not hanging mine on a wall. I you don't sit on a shelf. Gotcha. Well, shelf books. We can call them shelf books. Do you have <laughs> any shelf books? Uh, I mean... Nothing we haven't already talked about. Okay, but cool. I have some top picks. Yeah. What 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 are your what are your uh, display covers this week? Uh, my favorite would have to go to that Alex Ross we talked about, with Captain America. Yeah. That was my favorite That's one. Pretty fucking amazing cover, man. That's vibrant. It's got all the colors. It's got every yeah. single color ever known to man. <laughs> uh, it has a lot of them, except for black. There's no black in it. It's weird. Just kidding. There's a little bit of black. Just, no, there's black. <laughs> <Just fuck. laughs> I don't have it in front of me right now. Um. Yeah. No, there was there was definitely good stuff. I'd actually have to get let's I guess we could just go on to picks of the week from here, huh? Like yeah. A little segue. Go for it. Um my cover of the week is the Catwoman cover. It it's is a good cover. That's amazing, man. Art Germ just does justice to Catwoman. Oh, I didn't even fucking see that, dude. S -s fucking Santa Claus is passed out in the corner. I'll be She's stealing his fucking sack! Yeah, he's oh just unconscious against that wall. I didn't even see that down there. I was so busy looking at Catwoman's hands that, uh... <laughs> and see, uh... This is... Oh, that just solidifies this being my pick of the... You're just noticing all kinds of stuff this episode. Oh, my God. This is what an amazing cover, man! <laughs> uh, what about you? What's your cover of the week? Is it the, yeah, the, Alex uh, Ross. Gotcha. Yep. Yeah, well, that makes sense. What about your interiors? My interiors are gonna have to go to uh, Kings of Fear this week. Um, uh, good Lord, uh, Jones, Mr. Jones. Good God, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting your first name. Uh, Kelly Jones. Thank you. I'm sorry. I, I mean, with interiors like that, I wasn't going to just skip over the name. And you guys can listen to me think about it, too. Kelly Jones gets the interiors of the week. It was just, I like the way Batman's... And, I mean, it's been the same artist throughout the whole series. But there's just, the, the colors in this, for me, really popped. Um, I like the way Batman's drawn. I love the really pointy, tall, pointy-eared Batman. Yeah, okay. Um, I've actually, uh, John Beatty is really good at drawing tall, pointy-eared Batman. I have a framed print from him. Just because I, I think that's my favorite version of Batman, as far as the way he's drawn. It's just uh, obscure and sure goofy, but at the same time, this More is not a goofy story. Like, the, the Kings of Fear story is not goofy at all. Like, I mean, this, this particular issue is very intriguing and um, insightful. But not goofy. 
And I like the fact that you could draw a goofy looking Batman. Yeah, and no, still good kill pick. Yeah, so, Solid. Yeah, Kelly Jones. What about what about you? What's your interior? Infinity story? Wars. Uh, yeah? yeah, that artist like they, they just they capture a great aesthetic for this whole team. It, it really brings them to life. Who was our um, interiors for Infinity War? It was uh, Mike Diodoto. Mike Diodoto Jr., that's right. Yeah, no, that guy's amazing. This, I mean, I, yeah. Incredible. Yeah, definitely. Definitely up there with me for this, this week, for sure. What about your overall? Your top pick, what was your big book? <sighs> yeah, I know. Man. It was tough this week, man. There were some good ones. I, you know what? I think I had the most fun reading West Coast Avengers. I, I yeah. you've just turned me on to those. This is only like my second or third time reading them, but I'm, I'm hooked. It's 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 a fun read. It was, it, it was, and that was probably my runner up this week. My, yeah, my runner up would have to be Uncanny though. Punisher was my. Oh, good choice, good choice. Yeah, now Matthew Rosenberg is just incredible, and I. Uh, I kind of had a bit of a back and forth on Twitter with uh, Sisman, oh. and he and I both agree that, and he even said it himself, he, he already spoke with Mr. Rosenberg and says that we want a 10-issue Kingpin Punisher arc. <laughs> um, so if the artist is in his ear about it, I think I'm going to at least get a couple issues, because I'll say it once, I'll say it again, nobody has ever written Kingpin better than Matthew Rosenberg. And I can now say that nobody has ever written Punisher better. And that's a bold fucking statement. I said it. I'm looking right at your microphone. I said it. Um, Ooh, you can take that microphone? Uh, yeah. Uh, that, that's, there's, a, there's been a lot of amazing Punisher. But Matthew Rosenberg is it's just fucking what I want. Yeah. So, yeah. No, that's... Yeah, that's, that's what I got this week. Um, should we talk about next week's stuff? Let's do it. There's not a lot. No, there isn't. Uh, DC is taking a break, so there is no books coming out of DC. All the other publishers are very, 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 very limited titles. Um, let's start out with Dark Horse. They have one book coming out, and I'm reading it. Hellboy in the BPRD 1956 number 2. This one is not done by Mike Magnola. It is done by Chris Roberson. And Yishan Lee doing the art along with a few other various artists. Yep. Uh, I, I am fully... I, I love a new Hellboy book. I like that this takes place in 56. Um, I... And it's perfect knowing that there's a movie coming out. You gotta watch the fucking new Hellboy trailer, man. People are gonna hate on it, but David Harbour as Hellboy is dope. And, yeah, I hope I get a little bit of a... A little bit of that. Yeah? Yeah, like that type of attitude out of this book well we'll definitely be talking about it next week we will yes we will uh dynamite has a mars attacks book so if you're reading mars attacks i got number three out there kyle starks and chris schweizer oh chris schweizer um that's all they have yeah just that's 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 it uh, idw is throwing out go box number two uh tom sicoli and tom sicoli doing it all so, yeah, GoBots, if you're reading GoBots. Image, uh, Die, 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 number six. Robert Kirkman, Scott Gimple, Chris Burnham, Nathan Fairbairn. Bairn. I'm gonna, I tried to say the name two different ways, twice, and it came out the same it way. It did, time. exactly <laughs> the same. <laughs> I'm a robot, that was a glitch right there. Uh, so, yeah, um, I, I am not reading Die, Die, Die. I hear it's great, it's just so much good stuff on my list mm -hmm. but with it being such a light week I might just actually jump in actually as a matter of fact I think I'm going to give it a try uh, Man Eaters number 4 Chelsea Kane Kate oh good lord Nimzik that's what I'm going with so Man Eaters number 4 it's got the um, this moniker cat fight on the cover so don't know what that means but because I'm not reading the book but if you are it's time to buy it again. <laughs> <laughs> Marvel. Marvel actually has a few titles coming out this week. All of them I'm buying. I could say that I'm buying every single Marvel book next week. Fantastic Four, number five, or 650 if you're legacy counting. This is the issue. We're getting another wedding. Uh, we're getting a wedding, a real one, a for true wedding, and a bachelor party too. So, Dan Slott, Aaron Cooter. Yes, and um, sorry, Dan, thought about all those mean things I said about you earlier. 
I hope this book's good so I could take them back. <laughs> <laughs> um, re- uh, what else? What else? Superior Spider. Try that again. Superior Spider Man number one. So Christo. Oh, cool. Christo Gage is writing it. So the same guy that was writing Spider Gun. So Doc Ock is. He's got Peter's blessing to carry on the Superior Spider Man moniker. So we get an issue there. Uh, an issue. A series now. Um, ongoing. And Mike Hawthorne's drawing it, so, and it's still. I guess this does still tie in technically to the Spider Gun. It'll probably be like the new Miles Morales, though. It'll probably just be afterwards in its own story. Yeah, we shall see. There's a lot of variants coming out for this. There is. Uh, Uncanny X Men number. What are we at? Six now. Uh, Five. Seven. Seven. There it is. I was yeah. reading volume five. I'm like, that's not right. So yes, Uncanny X-Men number 7, Ed Brisson, Matthew Rosenberg, Kelly Thompson, uh, Pepe Perez is doing this one, sweet, right on, so excited about that, more on the world of the X-Universe, we have X-Force number 1, oh fuck, Ed Brisson's writing X-Force, Dylan Burnett's drawing it, um, yeah, another number 1 I'm jumping on, so this is the week of number 1s, what do we got, fucking X-Force... Uh, superior. Um, and I think there was one more, maybe not. But yeah, uh, no. I think you're missing Marvel Avengers action. Oh yeah, yeah <laughs> for, for the kids. I think that's IDW. It is. Yeah, that's IDW. Yeah, so it's a week, 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 small week. Yeah. Um, that. Oh, Boom Studios isn't taking the week off. Colin Bum's right. Re- Colin Bunn, good lord, I'm sorry, is writing Bone Parish with Jonas Scharf drawing it. So that's what we got for next week. So be light prepared week. for a light week of overviews, but it will be our year end in review episode. So we'll be talking about all of our favorite things, comic books, throughout the year. Uh, we would like to remind you to hit us up on Twitter at the at Cheers to Comics. That is at Cheers to Comics, all one word. It is. Ask us stuff. Tell us stuff. Um, if you are a creator yourself and you would like to reach out to us, feel free to do so. Yeah, let us know that we should be reading your work. Yes. Um, what else? Uh, Facebook. We're on Facebook. That's uh, still a thing. That fa- people still Facebook, uh, not as on, not on there as often. More on the Twitter, but yeah, we post stuff on there. More pictures and stuff like that. Um, uh, I think the most important thing would be Patreon. Uh, at this point, I really want to push this. Get on Patreon. We incentivize it. A buck a month isn't much, but it's enough to make us a um, dollar a month. <laughs> math get excited um, uh, there's different tiers at three bucks a month we have drawings and stuff like that we'll give you our we'll send out picks of the week comic books toys posters it could be anything who knows it's comic book related though so join support via patreon we also have exclusive content too that you can only pay for as a patron or get as a paid patron as I mean to say so, um, uh, I don't think there's anything else to plug. Is that it? That's all I have to say. All right, man. Everybody have a Merry Christmas and uh, geek responsibly. Yeah, Merry Christmas and whatever else you celebrate, fucking do that too. Cheers. Cheers.